<laughs> what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pass the Barb. Today is Tuesday, May 28th. Happy Memorial Day. And uh, I am your host, Adam Bartusik. We are back for another episode of uh, the number one outdoor podcast in the world. Right, Sobe? Yes, absolutely. Numero uno. We cannot thank you all enough um, for making us the number one outdoors podcast in the world because of you guys. We've we've stayed ranked here, I want to say, at like eight or nine weeks. And um, yeah, this is the start of the podcast but, night. This is Sobe, oh, you oh, and I were talking about this the other night, but, 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 but. Someone's catching up. And in order for us to stop them from catching up, we need ratings and subscribes. Yes. Ratings. Yes, we, we really do. have to. subscribers on Spotify, iTunes, yeah. Apple. And subscribing on YouTube too, if you're watching something. Yeah. We appreciate it. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube today, you're gonna meet see me and Sobe randomly staring off into the distance. That is because we are watching the Wolves game right now. Yeah. We, it was uh, just scheduled just to record jump off. this. And uh yeah, they just tipped off. It's five to four. I never we in my are entire life travesty of sporting events when we had this schedule for tonight <laughs> and I went to see when the T-Wolves played and the T-Wolves literally play the minute we're starting this. I'm like, no way Adam scheduled this podcast over the T-Wolves, which I don't like because I think that shows you've given up on them. No, I said we just had to change up the vibe. So we're going to watch it. Um, they, they are. They just showed a stat. They're two and oh in elimination games. So this this year. Is However, they are like, down three reps. So it's not this is either going to be like super good or like bad. Yeah, you're going to see you could see Adam sporting go down. No bullshit. Don't worry. We're only like 30 seconds into the game already. That's they got it. Ant-Man covering Luca. And it was not a foul. Pickpocket. No. But whatever, we're not oh. going to get into that part. But oh, I think um, we will. <laughs> yeah, eventually. But uh, yeah, so we're back on the outdoor. Or we're back on passive bar. We're back for another episode. And, and look, uh, and, and we didn't even. Part. We didn't. Even, hey, they have to. We're doing our part. I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah we exactly, are doing yeah, this in the middle of the Wolves game. <laughs> the Wolves have sucked for twenty years, and instead of me watching another Wolves game, we're like, yeah, we're recording a podcast, doing this for <laughs> you. Yeah, we're doing this for you. And by the way, we didn't introduce. The last co-host of the night, our good pal Ryan Pincala, top right corner, you know, down the house. You know, I'm here, boys. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm excited to watch however this plays out between you two watching this game because I'm not watching it currently. Uh, but I think I'm only just gonna like watch it like through you instead of actually having it yeah. on at all. I feel like this is gonna be a better way for me to experience real minnesota sports vibes you know like i want the fan reaction in real time <laughs> ryan's like son of a gun i'm gonna have to carry this pod <laughs> yeah. carry this. you're gonna have to put the team <laughs> on your like, back in a bit yeah. here. <laughs> we will be having on a fantastic guest uh one of my friends uh fellow bass fisherman actually probably probably one of the hottest bass fishermen in the country right now to yes. be honest, in Super Easton Nova, Fothergill, very young, young. Uh, very, young very good. Yes, mm -hmm. mm. He, and he's a bass snatcher all over the country, so he'll be on today. But yeah, we got an exciting episode for all you. Maybe, maybe we'll have Honor. Nobody knows. Who yeah, we knows, actually, dude? we actually haven't heard from him. There's been no contact or anything like that. It's not I, like he was going to make it or not tonight. It's he like, said he was going camping for Memorial Weekend, and I we haven't heard have from him since heard the weekend. Anything since? So I heard it from him during the weekend. Since then, who knows, dude? Which, which I really feel like, even if he could check in, you know, something happened on that camping trip that was just <laughs> something it was Connor esque. Something happened for sure. Northwoods, come on. Something so. Happened. Let's let's dive right into some current events. Obviously, the T Wolves are playing tonight. Um, we're down by three games, and we're back in Minnesota. Correct? No, we're still in Dallas. We got to get out uh, of Dallas. How are your feelings currently on this, Sobe? I mean, what are we about two minutes into this game so far? I, I feel like I'm still as a very subpar basketball fan in general. I just really started watching basketball uh, about a month ago. I've caught glimpses <laughs> here. Uh, over the bandwagon. Court. Oh, total bandwagon <laughs> fan right here. I, I've caught glimpses across the whole winter, and and I, I'm pretty impressed with how sweet playoff basketball is. And I'm trying to figure out why this Luca guy for the other team is so good. He's just he doesn't have a basketball body. He's 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 built odd and he's slow, dude. So I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What are your thoughts, Adam? <laughs> uh, I love that. It's. <laughs> 
Uh, so I come from a basketball family, so I've watched <laughs> basketball my whole life. Um, I'm not going to say I'm a diehard T Wolves fan. Cause I feel like there is, I'm going to give, there's this very small group of people that deserve their due and they have been diehard Wolves fans, like season ticket holders and everything Shout through 20 years of us being terrible, like really, really, really bad. Sell the franchise bad. And uh, they kept the franchise around, and we've been getting better every year the last five years. And I've started watching the Wolf. I, I would watch five to ten Wolf games a year this year, definitely more than that. And uh, it's been fun to see. And since the last time we recorded, a lot has happened. I believe the last time we recorded, we were up two rip to the Nuggets. Yeah. And I was like, this is the best. Like <laughs> we hadn't lost in the playoffs yet. There was so many good vibes. And then uh, we lost three in a row to the Nuggets. And then we won two in a row, which was awesome. It was so cool to see us win a game seven, um, advance to the Western Conference finals. And now we're one of the three teams left in the NBA. And there's a bunch of people who are like pissed off if we lose this series or whatever. But like in all reality, the Timberwolves are so bad that like this is a very cool thing to watch. It should be very good for years to come, but it ain't over yet. And said it's not over yet. So I'm going to keep watching, even though like historically, uh, I believe it's like oh and 54 for teams that are down zero. Th thoughts on thoughts on Ant-Man. Like will he go off this game because he's been kind of laying in the weeds past two games, and then also your thoughts on his catchphrase "bring your ass" and how that kind of took over the Minnesota subculture. The um, "bring your ass" rate. thing was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring it! I haven't been the, to Minnesota. The whole in a Minnesota long time. tour, the whole Minnesota tourism taking it to him was like, yeah, our new slogan is "bring your ass." That's, <laughs> that's great. I love that. Um, but I don't know. I hope he goes off. I thought he would have gone off like in the last three games after the yeah. first game. He didn't really. And he kind of hasn't. So um, I don't know. He's only 22 years old and it takes a bit normally to grow into kind of superstardom. And he's been launched into it and he's very, very good. And he's going to be very, very good for a long time. But there's a lot of learning in the NBA and like building blocks, they say and typically kind of have to learn the hard way and he might be doing that now because Luca and Kyrie have been yeah so scary this whole series they've been so good that you're just like well we're gonna lose now and you just watch it happen and you Ryan, know <laughs> where are you at on this Ryan where, where are you coming into this you I know, just you don't even have the game on but where no, what are your hopes I, fears, and dreams for this I'm tonight? a very casual Milwaukee Bucks fan so this to oh. me is fantastic to watch uh, just like, I think that's the greatest part about being like, a, a lot of like a Wisconsin sports fan is Minnesota. It's yeah. just watching the implosion of hope, like for so long. It's just, it's, it's something arena. you don't get to experience everywhere. I mean, I hope that they actually do win. Cause it would be, I love, I love the, you know, a team that <laughs> hasn't won a long time winning, I think is really cool. But there's just something about that Minnesota deal, dude. I don't you're understand. Sick. You're sick. Oh, I just dude, like so watch my best friends about six or seven or eight times a year throughout different sports just break their hearts every year. Dude, it yeah. really is. Like, it you really want to know how cursed Minnesota sports is in all reality. Since I was born in 93, <laughs> since I was born in 93, not one major four Minnesota sport team has made the championship of their league. It's oh, incredible. Made wow. the championship. Not one, like, but, you know, just go, we're talking to make ship. it to the dance. They're like, they ain't even been there. We're a step <laughs> from the dance right here. And I'm like, oh, my God. And we're down 03 now. And I'm like, Ugh, it's I not hope, looking good. I hope ass. that they can. Yeah. I hope they can at least make it a series, you know? Yeah. That well, the most Minnesota sports thing of all time, we're all kind of sitting here like, well, if it, if it's going to end, can you just end it? Just go, yeah. just sweep Because the most Minnesota <laughs> sports thing of all time would be they like rattle three off here and we're like, oh my God, they might do it. <laughs> and then they lose in game seven. Yeah. And we're like, that's that most totally Minnesota happen. That's about right. That's ever. about right. Yeah, yeah, it would add up so good too. You'd be like, yep, that's about right. <laughs> I will say though, I, my favorite thing about like Minnesota sports fans is that it's like they build up all this like we're gonna do it we're gonna do it and then before it's even over they're already like 
here's the 21 ways we could potentially lose this for sure. <laughs> yeah. no it's like, dude, nobody's prepared like, for nobody's success. Like, we could win. Just, like, they yeah. want that, but they're like, we won't. For just sure. beaten and broken down. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> dude, so broken down. Like it's so bad. But it is. Here I it's am incredible. with the Wolves game on and praying for my dear life that we can some I can watch them again another day this week. Ant Man. Well, hey. By the end of this podcast, we'll know more than likely. To They're know. currently oh. winning. They're currently winning. So. Yeah. They They're- are currently winning. <laughs> They're looking. They look a lot better today too, so far. But they've looked better at the beginning of every game. It's just, I don't know. Soby, you've been watching these games. Isn't it crazy to see like Luca and Kyrie, two guys who are like at the absolute top? Yeah. And just in the last five minutes, are able to go. And I'm going to end this now. Yeah. Like, and they just like literally put a team on their back, and they're like, I don't care what you do. It's over. Everything is so fast, dude. And Luca is so crafty, weird that I don't know. They complement each other well. And it's just like, like you said, I don't really know if someone should just, how do we shut? It's not about how to shut them down. It's almost like, let them get theirs. And then we just, we just kind of score more points. And <laughs> yeah. not those other well, guys the thing. <laughs> These games have been close and yeah. Carl dude. Anthony Towns and me- uh, Anthony Edwards have been the absolute worst <laughs> players they've been. We're going to check like back years. in in like an hour on this and it's going to be like so different. Like I- <laughs> it's going to be different. The we're moody- playing so much better right now though. So my optimism is growing. Oh, could, could be yeah. a real moody podcast folks. Yeah. So stra- strap in. We're going to jump from basketball to some more current events. Ryan, hit me with some current events. Events, anything oh going dude. on besides b-ball because we will check back in on this dude i've been fishing you know Hell yeah i've been out there getting it and uh was just i just got home yesterday actually i was up in wisconsin for like a long weekend had monday off for memorial day so i went up yes. there for musky opener which is something i have not missed in an extremely long time i've just always done the wisconsin musky opener i terrible about fishing the minnesota one but i'd never miss wisconsin so went up to the north woods and uh lived out of the back of my truck for a few days and just went out there and chased them around dude opening day i uh i i put two in the boat um little solo mission whatever i actually i had i lost one other one had one other fish up so i had like a awesome opening day it was super cool there was like barely anybody else out i went to a small lake it's more of like a numbers lake whatever uh but i felt like i picked good because that's like the one thing with going out it's like there's a lot of people that don't musky fish much but they do fish opening weekend right so like yeah. everywhere is busy and uh some of the places like around Monaco and stuff were a crazy town plus it was memorial day weekend right so like yeah. everyone's at their cabins like doing so like there is people everywhere so trying to like lay low and just hit some under the radar kind of stuff and worked out, um, had some shots at some much bigger fish on Monday. Um, just didn't, didn't get it done, but it was, uh, it was a hell of a weekend. Super fun. Um, as far yeah. as your musky opener tradition goes for yes. for years, are you fishing some of the same lakes every opener in Wisconsin or have you bounced around from fishing reports or just a, a an itch you got to scratch? A little bit of both. I, there's a few areas that have like, I've gone to more than others, just like areas, right? That, yeah, there's probably like the same, you know, five lakes that are, are producers in those areas. But this year I went to a totally different area. I found a couple lakes last year and the year before that I just never got to put in much time on that I was like, dude, these are pretty sick and like nobody's fishing here. Um, so that was where I went on opener. I was like, I'm just going to hit that on, on the way. Like it's really not by anything else. So it was one of yeah. those kind of like outlier lakes that I never get to. Cause I'm never like driving in that area. So posted up on one of those, that was where I had that awesome opening day and then uh, continued up further North and ended up, I, d- I did end up fishing around Monaco area a lot. Um, I just love that area. Like I, yeah, there are better musky lakes in the state and like, I don't really fish Monaco chain too much. Uh, I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's busy. It's really busy. There's so many more people bass fishing out there than ever. So there's just tons of boats on like every structure and everything. Plus the musky guys, plus everybody else. So I kind of just like swing through there. I love hanging out in that town, but uh, yeah, I, I fished up that way. I wanted to go even further North, but I just did, ran out of time. <laughs> Plus, I feel like, 
there, there's oh. something epic too about the Manaqua area and just like those small Northwoods lakes, like going for going for big fish in small lake. Like that idea yeah. alone is like so sweet. I feel like if you catch a muskie in a great lake, it is sweet and that's cool. But there's something about like if you're in a tiny little pothole Northwoods Lake and you just pop a beautiful big musk out of there. It's just like, yeah. Well, and even like small ones, dude, like I just love being in the Northwoods fishing muskies. It's like, that's what like, I just feel like that's what that area is about, you know? And there's a lot yeah. of other stuff too. Like I did some walleye fishing too, like at night, went out and cranked rocks for walleyes and banged them up and caught some big smallies and stuff. It was sweet. It was just like, you know, you're just up there doing it. Whatever you run into, you go and, you know, got all kinds of rods laid in the boat and you're just like, oh, you have options. Fuck. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's fun. And like you said, there's a lot of small lakes. Like a lot of these lakes are, you know, 300 acres or whatever. And you just dump in and fish it for half a day, drive to the next one, dump in that one. So you can lake hop a lot. Cause it's two minutes, to the next boat ramp, pretty much anywhere up there, which was, I love. What was water temperature up there? Dude, that was a crazy thing. So I've been up there the past several weekends, like back to back to back to back. Yeah. And I thought like we were going to get like, a, more of like a warming trend right and uh it literally has not changed <laughs> like it is literally sitting anywhere from 60 to 63 on any lake you go to and like really that's it like i i thought we'd be getting up into like the mid like 65 something like that but it's like even the small lakes are not warming up up there and you haven't seen any small mouth on beds or anything that was the interesting thing. So like even a couple of weeks ago, there was, there were like empty beds, like some fish that had pulled up. Um, but like, I went back to some of those same lakes and there weren't like new beds. You know what I mean? Like there, there must've been at some point we had like a stretch of warm weather where some of them pulled up and spawned and then it never really got like consistent enough maybe for like a lot of them to pull up. Cause there's still smallies sitting on rocks and almost 20 feet of water right now up there weird and then you got fish that are like post spawn already too it's real like i i haven't seen it quite like this before i guess but there i mean like the pre-spawn fishing is still there and it's still really good like i was just burning around on some stuff throwing a jerk bait around still catching them that's but, awesome um but yeah there were bad i mean there were fish on beds to be caught there were fish that definitely have spawned out and already bailed out of there too but yeah it's it's not um it's just been hanging like right at 60 for like weeks, dude. Yeah. But Dang. yeah. And like the muskies were muskies were pretty shallow overall. I mean, some of the biggest fish I saw were in less than two feet of water. Um, were, were you throwing a big plug for muskies to a big jerk bait like you do? Or are you burning blades or. Uh, bl I was throwing like small blades and wood, like wood and jerk baits and stuff. Yeah. And all the action I had was on all, well, all the fish that I caught were on wood. Um, did those uh, had a couple big fish up on blades that just didn't like didn't eat or whatever and um yeah i don't know it's just spring's always weird though like t there's fish like all over the place it seems like especially in wisconsin where it's like you got fish that are already progressed out to like a weed line and they're like really aggressive and active hunting bait and then you got these ones that are just laying up shallow like trying to get warm yeah <laughs> you know um but it's all good like in a couple weeks from now they'll be definitely on that more of that summer pattern deal. And they'll be, you know, you'll be able to target them on weed edges and stuff like, but the weed development's super behind up there. Like most of the cabbage is less than a foot tall. Like you, if you can find good, like broadleaf cabbage anywhere, it's, it's like gold right now. But I dude, like some of these places that normally have super nice cabbage beds and everything, scan them, fish to these areas or whatever. And it's like stuff's this big, you know? So it's not really holding that many fish right now. There's not even any bait up shot. Like, dude, it's it's real weird. Like a lot of the bait is in like 12 feet. That's yeah, weird. I, I think I, I kind of got out a little bit too, Ryan. And um, <clears throat> I mean, I had a tournament up north. We can talk more about that. But just yeah. in relation to what you're saying with the bites, like I think, Sobe, you and I were out. Uh, recently, but I think it's a pretty well drawn consensus from anywhere. I would say St. Cloud South, um, largemouth are done, like yeah. well past I... done, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a vast majority, I would say 80% or so. Um, I the smallmouth, I think there's something else going on yet. Um, I, I, I think also these lakes around our area and not not just up north it, it was like a weird it's a weird spawn in general just a weird because like like adam said a lot of largemouth are post spawn but 
I know tons of people. And even right now, like I, I know where crappies are sitting still on the nest that I feel like are jet black and they just got there. Super yeah. odd. I, I think weird. a lot of it has to do with uh, all of our lakes were so low for a couple of years mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're back up and full now. Yeah, um, a lot of amazing. them, I mean, discounting like prior and a couple others that I think that's a whole different conversation probably to go on with the lake association, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the actual lakes like do Minnetonka is high, like really high. Yeah. Water's, back up to where it should be um a lot of the other lakes like where you and i were it looked good like everything was about where it should be so i think that also plays a factor where you know we forget for two years you know lakes were in drought they were low they were slowly getting lower you know where fish would routinely go up into a foot and a half or two feet of water the last two years that's been half a foot yeah. Right. And they haven't quite used it yet. So now it's getting higher and they want to go there. Well, now there's a bunch of different vegetation there and things are different. So I think there's a lot of different combinations going on. But the biggest thing is, if you really think about it, guys, we haven't had like a three or four day stretch of really nice weather since the beginning of May. No, you're right. And all the rain we've been having too. It's been like, like Hot, not hot, letting it rain, warm up. Cold, cold, hot, cold rain, rain, hot, 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 cold, pressure, hot, windy, pressure, yeah. windy. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and like, dude, in up north, even further, it's like, dude, it's still getting down. Like, I was sleeping in the truck, dude. It's getting to like forty some degrees at night every night. You yeah. know, it's not like staying. Like, it gets up to you know sixty, sixty five, whatever during the day, but it's still cooling off, dude. Like, it is not summer <laughs> yeah you know no uh, you, me and Alyssa were talking about that i was like it's kind of nice to have a spring for the first time in forever it doesn't feel like summer right away already and i like yeah. that too because like i feel like it's still kind of sweatshirt weather and i'm like still yeah. in a sweatshirt or at least a light hoodie like in minnesota i feel like i wear a t-shirt so little that like i'll put it on even in the house and i'm like oh dude i'm not used to this I feel yeah, like yeah. dude, dude yeah. i'm wearing like i'm wearing like rain bibs and like shorts Dude, my, you know, sandal, like, yeah. my <laughs> sandal tan line is so far behind right now. Like I was right. looking at it compared to last year and I was like, we haven't even gotten a sunburn yet this year. What is going on? Oh, right? I got torched, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm, oh, dude. Yeah. Last weekend I got, oh, yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> lucky for you everywhere i've oh, been yeah, sitting, it's been raining here, yeah. cold as shit every day <laughs> it has been cold okay yeah. cool. back to ryan question for you just because yeah. you said you kind of you truck camped it would you chef yeah. up would you chef up in some boat oh no. okay this <laughs> come on come on i know this you'd be week, holding up this weekend was not it dude this weekend... even if it was grease monkey food even if you no, were just living and dying on survival dude. so okay <laughs> There was zero chefing of any kind happening this weekend. This was like, I was there to fish, dude. Yeah. And uh, I even was like, man, I haven't, uh, <laughs> I don't, I can't give up my spots here because these are just as good as fishing spots, but I haven't, I haven't uh, truck camped in Monaco in a little bit. And I was like, man, I can't even remember where to plug in around here. So I had to solicit some information from a, <laughs> from a very good source of uh some places to uh borrow Funny. a little power and uh so i i did i i did one little mission where i needed to top off top off some batteries that was uh proximal to a chinese restaurant that i did partake in for a while while the batteries were charging and then i went out walleye fishing that night and whatever i needed to i needed to recharge i had fish for like a day a two days and i needed to charge my like cranker with the because i got the graphs running around there and the whole thing yeah. God, isn't it crazy how good lithium batteries are though oh dude the trolling motor i could have ran for like six weeks easy <laughs> and uh yeah but so whatever i was like i need to plug in so i can fish to you know tomorrow or whatever all right i'm not giving i anyway i <laughs> you talk to the super buffet the, the <laughs> no no i stayed at the buffet until my batteries were getting more charged up and then i went and used it more and I couldn't stay anymore, dude. They it was even the deal where they like bring the thing with like the cookies on it, like you go now, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, all right, all right, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right yeah, yeah, that's fair. And uh, so whatever, I I would get out of there. But that night, I'm like, dude, I got I got a charge and like whatever. So I I go to this restaurant that was not open currently, and uh, 
plugged in there, but I looked it up and I was like, oh, I thought this place was like closed, closed. It was not. It was like open tomorrow morning. And it was like, I was already plugged in and I was like ready to rip it. I was like, all right. But they opened at 6 a.m. And I'm like, they're going to be here like early, dude. Yeah. So I got up at four and unplugged all my shit and then like (laughs) drove to the other side of the parking lot and then crashed again. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) So I topped off the batteries, moved my truck and everything. And then I I just crashed out again for a while. And then uh, whatever. Yeah. Went in a quick trip for Brecky and got back on the lake. So it was it was a straight DJ like. I like that though. I, I like that. those trips. Dude. You're just in survival yeah. mode. Your, your full focus is on the fish. But I got I got a few waypoints saved on some other plugins around Monaco area. So okay, <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> okay, I will, dude. I will. Yeah. Okay. But it was good. It was good. I love doing stuff like that and just kind of like I was not at a campground, dude. Like I'm just yeah. like I got the just cot in the bed of the truck and I'm just going. I actually I was gonna sleep in the boat, but it rained a bunch, so all my shit was wet. So Dang. Like, mm. did you did you get your custom cover done for your boat <laughs> no that's why the boat was wet <laughs> oh <laughs> I mean, you get, they're expensive dude but get one because well, they'll I have, last forever and here's the thing so damn good i have a sick cover i need it to just be modified yeah yeah they'll modify it just i take know it in. i just adam it. adam shared a place <laughs> with ryan um a couple weeks back about yeah, maybe you can go into it. Yeah, I'll, what they do I mean, that. I'll plug them. Tarp, Inc. and Savage. Dude, they're awesome. They make my boat cover. They make fighters. They do a bunch of other guys who travel around the country and do tournaments. They'll modify an existing one as long as it's close enough to getting over. Because if you put a bunch of graphs on and stuff, like and like a 52-inch trolling motor, like everything changes. Uh, they had to completely do a custom one for me, which was like, I think it's like 1200 1300 bucks, which I yeah. think most people are like, that's outrageous. But, dude, once you have a really good cover, it's well, yeah, so... yeah, but you're also protecting a... It's not like you're putting it on a over. kayak here. Yeah. Yeah, like, you're protecting... You're protecting a, some pretty expensive equipment. Yeah, super expensive graphs <laughs> and all that. And, like, dude, with how well they make them secure, like, you could totally crawl under it if yeah. you want. Well, like mine. So like I have a Ranger factory cover. It's a yeah. sweet cover. Like it's made for like highway driving. Like it's dope. It just doesn't, uh, basically it fits everywhere other than the front end, the front end. It fits over the bow, but it doesn't fit over. Cause I put yeah. a, a, a bigger trolling motor on. I put, I got two graphs up on the bow now that if, if, even if I take them off, it, it kind of fits, but I just need them to like build a little, like box out area over like the yeah and they did that with my cover on the boat before they just basically make a sleeve and it kind of like fits right over where the all tracks is yeah Um, well like i put a 60 inch shaft on mine and it actually almost fits like it's it's actually decently close so i don't think they'll have to do like a ton to it no it'll just be a couple hundred bucks but it's very worth it they'll probably put some new ratchet straps on it and stuff too which will make it better but um, yeah yeah but anyway i yeah i don't i don't really trailer it with the cover on too much because it doesn't totally wrap so and it rained a bunch so <laughs> i got you all right so watched what... all the mayflies off <laughs> yeah yeah bug hatches so be what you've been up to yeah let, let me hit some current events and then adam do you want to tell a story a current event that recently happened to you i feel like it'd be a good story for the pod or are you not oh, trying to it, share it's it? coming up yeah, it's kind of, it's also going to be viewer questions, but I can also talk about in general. I went fishing for a week, so I can oh, talk yeah. about okay. that. But I Shelby, that. you want to talk I'll, about? Yeah, I'll, all right, we got good stories coming up, folks. Like some really good ones. <laughs> a good Buckle one coming from Adam. Really good one. Either way, current events. Um, like Ryan, been fishing, dude, fishing so much. Uh, and May is still just the freaking best, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people love fall. I still, I love fall like right here, but I think May almost takes the cake just because. Like you said, there's options. So like you can go out bassing during the day and then you have the option to go plunk on some crappies. If you see them really quick, if they're up there spawning and then right in the evening, at least in my area, like this is the only time of year that I can take advantage of slamming some walleyes and harvest some walleyes kind of around the dirty South Metro where I'm at. So been slamming billies inside weed edge. Adam was out and we were freaking stroking them. Me and Adam were out together. I was, I was doing a photo shoot, so I didn't partake. I didn't make a cast. Like actually, so we could validate that. But uh we put his raptors down 
mm-hmm. for two and a half hours, and I'm pretty sure he caught one. If not every cast, it was every other cast. Dude, what? that gets me what? fired it up. Was I have in, not like by the end of it, we're like, we're like, maybe we should try over here. Maybe we should try over here. And then two and a half hours later, we're like, we should probably just go home because I think 90% of the population <laughs> is Boom. Right, right here. We Dude. found them and they were loaded ah. and the water was too dirty. It's not like we can see them, but I bet we were in a foot and a half of water. There had to been over a hundred bass. Dude, there. I mean, oh, we probably well, caught. Crazy. We probably caught sixty bass. Maybe this more, is the first know. year in a long time I have not fished for largies one day yet this year. That's good though. You'll when you do it, I you'll, you'll learn, enjoy it a lot more lean. once you do. I've just yeah. been smallmouth fishing and like musky fishing. Oh god damn! Dude. Like I saw some like what you got what you were posting on your story and stuff, and I was like, dude, like I just need to just go. Jig like, bites. Some I, of those it was one of those bites. bites. I just want to- Oh. It was one of those bites. They were biting so good that like Rich was there too. And he just started tying new stuff on that. He was like, I haven't caught one on this before. I just want to catch bite one. Here. Yeah. Well, dude. And then he'd throw it and then throw it for a bit. And they didn't bite it. He's like, this is trash. Cause they don't bite <laughs> anything. <Yeah. laughs> but like, dude, he had this one sim- swim bait he threw. Both Sophie yeah. and I bought a bunch. I'm not going to talk about it. Cause nobody yeah. talks about it specifically. Yeah. But dude, this thing mashed it got bent. it was a good size swim bait too and it was a they good were... swim bait and it was getting crushed and soby was throwing in a mag draft behind it and caught like one or two. Oh, yeah. really but okay. this thing was getting mowed was it yeah. a was it a, a soft swim bait or it was a, a soft body? swim bait okay. yes yeah yeah and the, the tail kick mixed with the body we're not uh, us we're guys not, hey, in the north hey. we're not huge swim bait dudes by any means we don't know the whole culture we don't know a lot about them but you know when one works and one doesn't, and I got to see it right in front of my eyes, so that was pretty sweet. That's sick. I'm a guy who has way too much dollars in swim baits in my garage, as you guys have seen, and I still went and spent a hundred dollars on those ones because I was like, "This thing is good, worth it. <laughs> like it worth is it. really that's good." How, that's how you end up buying a lot of stuff. I have so much stuff that I bought just because I was like, one day I was out somewhere and I was like, "This is the deal, yeah, dude." And you end up loading up, and then you never run into that bite again. <laughs> But either way, fishing's right, been yeah. good. Um, the lake seems like the the pond weed. The progression's a little more there. Um, it's yeah. grown up really bad in the lake I live on, kind of surrounding lakes. But dude, that curly yeah. leaf stuff. It, I know it's so gross. But other than that, it just felt good how, to really be. How about on. the walleye thing, dude? Tell me, walleye, are you are you cranking them? I'm. I've in years past, I've really slam dunked on number five shad wrap fishing, yeah. like the outside weed edge. I'm still catching some that way. Not as many as before. I'm catching more now on a paddle tail. And then I'm Mm. also just like, I'm not a walleye dude, by the way. I've been experimenting more with just like trolling husky jerks. And by the way, if you're a bass dude, that is like, like kind of, you'd like to just like catch maybe some walleyes. Dude, the amount of lakes and time I've spent scanning now, just because I'm like trolling and like, I'm trolling in like, you know, five to 10 feet of water, like primo like structure area around here. I'm finding stuff left and right trolling for walleyes and I've kind of become addicted to casually trolling. And I just feel like I'm finding stuff along the way that, that may benefit me down the line. So, all right. All right. Yeah, I just how, do that. How, how'd you catch him? Crank. Okay. Cranking pretty much, but cause what like, crank? Yeah, well, that's the thing. So it was different this time. So normally I am a dude. I have an uncomfortable amount of jointed Rapalas. Like, yeah, so many. That is like my go-to walleye bait, especially this time of year. May, June, shallow yeah. rocks, northern Wisconsin. Done deal. Go Maybe. there at sunset for the first couple hours of dark. Fill your life well. See ya. But <laughs> this year, dude, the fish have all been sitting a lot deeper. Really? Like, dude, I'm I'm fishing the stuff I normally am fishing, and I'm looking around with live, and I'm just like fishing all this stuff, and I'm like not getting bit, and I'm just like looking out there, and I'm like, well, they're all right there. Like, okay. So I, dude, I, I did not have a ton of like cranks with yeah. like for that type of, I got a lot of like bass cranks and stuff, but for the first time in a long time, I am mutilating fish on a Wally diver. Really? Dude. <laughs> really? Yeah. The seven to 10 one. And it is dude. Fire tiger. Wally diver is just fire so tiger is epic. Dude. dude. You can't beat it. <laughs> can't beat it. <laughs> but that jointed, that jointed Rapala is always a player. Like, dude, mayfly hatch on Sunday night, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Epic mayfly hatch. Like, can't even barely breathe, right? Yeah. And uh, did you catch during that mayfly hatch? Yes, dude. And I, looking back, I was like, dude, I should have thrown, I should have thrown a goddamn topwater. 
I could have yeah. caught him on a popper, dude. I was on this rock point and it's just like throw a joint or pile out there and reel it as slow as you can, like a wake bait, dude. They're torching it off the ball. surface. They were right on dude. And I'm watching on live. I'm watching them on the bottom in four feet, just vapor trail up to the surface to eat mayflies. Wow. I wish I would have recorded it. I was like, this is so sick. Like I'm watching walleyes like nuking mayflies off the surface, you know, on live because they're like 30 feet in front of the boat on this rock point. And uh yeah, whatever. We were out there and uh we had kind of got on this thing where you could just basically just reel it right underneath the surface as slow as you could. Like it was like slow roll because it's a floating lure. Yeah. And just like, yeah, just slow rolling it, and all of a sudden it just get torched. So it was kind of sick. But that uh I mean, I don't know. There's probably better ways to catch them during a mayfly hatch, but we caught <laughs> we caught some. So. No, you caught them. Cool. You just threw baits in the top half of the water column, and I feel yeah. like I I struggled during the mayfly hatch, and it was bugs were nuts. And I came back in, and I like stayed out till like one in the morning, and I literally yeah. came back in. And I went, "You're so freaking stupid, dude! It's a mayfly hatch, and you were fishing like on the bottom, like you were fishing the bottom." Well, that's what we were doing at like, first too, right? I then felt we started, an idiot. Yeah. yeah. But yes, there. So whatever. That's a thing. I don't know. Dang. <laughs> All right, Adam. Just, yeah. Get it, get in, get into more or, or you want to, can you well, get yeah, in? I went, more? I went fishing, um, at a tournament up on Cabotogama, which by the way, um, so there had never been any tournaments there. Really? Nobody knew much about it. I just want to give one huge shout out to that community in general, because dude, I've never been somewhere for a tournament and like been around the country doing it. Never been somewhere for a tournament where the community was so pumped about everybody being there really like, like their community was so awesome all the resort owners everybody was so pumped about the bass tournament that was in town so that's like kind of refreshing though that it's like you don't show up and people are like oh god these guys you know? yeah no they were the community <laughs> was great they were so pumped about us being there so i was really pumped about that that made that uh, a lot of fun food was great all the restaurants were great the lodging was awesome and the lake is beautiful um and what i'll say about that is bro you guys are talking walleyes yeah i got a walleye lake and it is Lake Cabotogama. Really? really? And you can, dude, I was catching 10 to 20 of them a day on a jerk bait. It's and sick. it is so much fun. And they were all like 18 to 26, probably. Mm, highly it was knifeable. unreal. <laughs> they do have a slot out there. I didn't keep any. But I know I didn't keep any, but everybody else was is keeping Is the slot 18 to 23? <laughs> I think it is, actually. Really? But, uh, but there is oh so God. many good walleyes. But uh, yeah, dude, everybody was keeping walleyes, obviously within the right regulation. But uh, eating them every night, and they were they're super fun to catch because they just eat the shit out of a jerk bait. That's fun. Um, like, dude, it was fun in the level that like I got good enough at like live and everything that I'd look and I'm like, yeah, well, dude, there's so many fish on the bank of banks of these lakes. So you're like, what mm -hmm. am I looking at? But you would look over and be like, those are walleyes. And you'd throw a jerk bait over them on live, and you'd be like, twitch, 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 twitch. And you'd get it above one of them, and you'd watch him start to tip <laughs> up. And as he's tipping up in your head, you're like, gotcha, fucker. And then you just <laughs> tap yeah. it. You'd tap it once, and it was just T-bone, <laughs> like immediate. I, is that is, so much fun? <laughs> is that one of the lakes, too? Is it fairly like hard bottom everywhere? So, like, everything, it's like the ultimate scoping scenario, right? Like yeah. Hard bottom. Well, Fish I will are... say there's a lot more <laughs> mud there than oh, really? um, I anticipated compared to like Vermilion or some of the other way up North lakes, I would have thought. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a thing that I was very caught off guard by. That would explain why there's, I mean, the, the crappie fishing and some other fishing up there is fantastic as well. But uh, it's a super cool fishery. Uh, it was really unique being somewhere where like in the morning you would launch from where the resorts were and then you'd like go out to practice and dude, there's only like development on maybe like 4% of this lake. Sweet. So like you would go leave and you'd go out to practice all day, never see a dock, maybe see another bass boat, see a couple walleye boats. And then you'd be like, I'm going to go home now. And as you're driving back, like other boats are like coming out of nowhere and like driving back to like kind of the same area and it's That's like cool. your commute home you know so it was <laughs> yeah. it was kind of cool um it was very weird though being like 
when you went over towards Namakin, basically once you pass the Ash River, your phone would just say SOS. Really? So like the whole time you were over there, you're like, if something happens, I am like, I am not getting back. I have yeah. no idea how to get back. There are so many islands over here. Well, it's pretty far north though, too. I mean, it's like kind of in the yeah. Middle I, nowhere, I right? mean, I drove my boat right to the Canadian border. There was border patrol out the whole time, and um, yeah. Is it, there largemouth there? Is there largemouth? So population? funny thing that was a talk of all the practice. Everyone was like, "So, is there any largemouth or not?" And uh, I don't know if anyone caught any in practice or not, but someone just posted in the Minnesota Bassheads Facebook group that they were up on Cabotoba cab and namakin uh this next weekend and they posted a picture of like a five that they caught really? randomly smally fishing and i was like i knew there was a couple there had to have been a couple they're probably big they're probably all big yeah but dude like there is so much water and it, it was really fun i had a pretty bad tournament i only had like 11 pounds or something um but learned a ton because it's it's a hundred percent of pattern fishery um it's a lot like it's like rainy in the sense that the fish move a absolute piss load um they just move 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 because there's bait everywhere there's current uh there's wind current pushing the warm water around um it felt like we were there like a week too late for it to be really good pre-spawn and a, like a week to three weeks too early for them to be like on beds um, so, so like they were in that like packs of like two to three mm. super scattered. So like you never got into a mm. big school. Uh, whereas my first day of practice, I got thrown off for a sec. Cause I pulled up to a rock point in the middle of bum fuck out by Canada. Yeah. Went in my live at it, caught a four and a half, a three and three quarter and a three and a half on three casts. And I could see like 20 of them there. And I was like, I know where I'm starting. And then I went back there a few days later and there yeah. wasn't a fish to be seen. And that was kind of a lot of our spots. They just kind of vanished. And it really taught you a lot about how much they move up there. Like they move yeah. a ton. Smallmouth yeah. are just gypsies that way. Too. Here today, gone tomorrow, dude. Smallmouth. Yeah. And they moved a ton. But the walleyes, man, they will tell you if they're there. They will yeah. bite right away. And there That's is, cool. I don't know if I've been to a lake with more 10 to 18 inch pike either. Oh, dude. oh, oh like bars. rats. <laughs> a abundant amount of little pike and then every once in a while you'd set the hook and there'd be nothing there and you're like that was probably a bigger one i did hook one that was giant um just little i guess a little story on that i was practicing so like i've been working on my live scoping game obviously or mega yeah. live whatever you use and um I'm like pulling up and I'd gone down this bank the day before and I thought it looked amazing, but I didn't catch anything on it. So I was like, I need to go back through there on different conditions or something. And I pull up and I had noticed that some fish were out further deeper. So I was like, I wonder if there's some just suspended out in the middle of nowhere out here. And I uh, just pulled in like 200 feet offshore and I just started looking around and there's see this globe show up like six feet under the surface over like 35 feet and i was like i know what you are chuck my jerk bait over to it jerk 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 set the hook on it jumps and i'm like yup that's like five and a quarter and like an absolute freak for up there wow and I like and there's someone close so i just give it a bunch of slack and it comes off and i look around in the area more and there's a couple more floating out there and i'm like oh baby oh, okay okay <laughs> Ooh, i have no idea what i'm getting myself into but there's some out here uh so then the next day i go pull up to the shoreline catch like a three and a half pound smallmouth right off the shoreline and i'm like well i'm gonna work this way i'm looking around point out see a giant blob six feet under the surface and i'm like yep know what you on. are throw the jerk bait over to it reel down jerk 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 look down and live Watch it tip up, motherfucker turns to four feet long and shoots straight up. And, and like, you like can't your jerk bait away fast yeah. enough. No. <laughs> he just grabs it, just starts rolling, and I'm like, oh my god, no, 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 my poor vision 110 it just breaks off immediately, like oh. a mid 40s pike. Then in my head, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not made out for this out in the middle of nowhere throwing a jerk bait on him. Oh my god, that's funny. Oh, you dude, think but the moment you see have, them turn like, and you just see they go from a ball 
to just elongated and you're like, <laughs> you're like ah! <laughs> it was like facing you and then it turned yeah. you're like no <laughs> you're like no 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 bad yeah. thing bad thing bad problem so do you think that now that they had more of like a high profile event up there um that they're gonna return to that yeah right? oh yeah for sure i mean Maybe. we had all said dude i would i feel like we were there so they had talked about some freakishly big bags potentially with us. Well, it going still there. took a lot to win though. I mean, yeah, it, it took almost like... 20. Um, and typically your first year or two there, you don't really see what the place actually has. Cause everyone has to learn it. Uh, game day, it did blow really, really hard. Uh, there were like legitimate four to five footers out there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, I almost stuffed my first wave in a long time long time with void like one of those ones where you start coming down over it and you're both like ah like, just ah. kind of clenching and you're like please boat be long enough <laughs> and then it just barely is long enough you're like oh my god but uh yeah we had all talked dude i don't know if you could go to somewhere that may be more fun at the end of july and august like oh, i think yeah. the top water out there would be mm. mental yeah That'd be so sweet. That so would be cool. I, I'm very sure we'll end up going back. I'm very sure some other tournaments will go up there. I hope everybody does. Uh, if fish is enormous, the resorts needed up there. It, it's just fun. It's fun to go somewhere new. Your bycatch is walleyes. I mean, and little pike. But when you set the hook on something and like it has weight, you're like, this is either a walleye or a bass. And the yeah. walleye, are, I caught one walleye on a jerk bait that was not hooked. I actually caught two of them that were not hooked. They just had a jerk bait. So T bone just that clamped. they couldn't close their mouth <laughs> Yeah, got it in and just pulled it out. And I was like, Oh my God. That's um, sweet. Yeah. So they were fun carving in and out out there. And yeah, dude, it's, it's just sweet. So many islands and it's beautiful. Hell yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's get into some of our, uh, our, we got some fan submission questions, topics, whatever. Yeah. We'll roll through these so that we're golden for when our boy Easton shows up soon, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, so we threw out a little question box on Instagram. We had some other DMs that come in just like over time or whatever too, but I threw this out just to uh, get some input from some people. So we're going to try to do this more often, I think, just try to see what people want us to chat about or whatever. Um, but we got a couple good ones here. These are just kind of some like quick hitters, I guess. But okay, so here's a question. We don't have to dive in too deep on any of these, but um, – I guess let's just do this one because there was like three three about this. Bart about uh one just said cigarette butts. One said team trail sabotage has justice been served. Uh people just want to know uh what's the deal? People want to know about the Marlboro <laughs> man. <laughs> <He's been named. laughs> well, well, well. So give us a backstory about what this is and then all we'll right. So update. basically what happened at the team trail event, like I said, everything was great up there. I had a great time. But uh when I came in for weigh in on tournament day, uh Voight and I made like a I don't know 30 minute run back. And um I come to get off pad and we we're gonna hit one more spot for like five minutes quick before we went in i come off pad and i'm like my boat won't go under like seven miles an hour right now so i thought my uh hot foot was jammed or something was going on i couldn't get it to go under 1400 rpms so i uh i went and i got into the no wake zone to get in put the trolling motor down just went in whatever and then uh, went about our day for the weigh-in, pulled it off, and was like, man, okay. And, like, loading the boat was a pain in the butt. But Because uh, you couldn't idle, right? I mean. No. No, I was either going seven and a half miles an hour, which is or, about the point that your here. boat, like, wants to start going up. Mm. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it was not good. And uh, so then I'm like, okay, I just need to take it to Intune to get uh, – you know, whatever, whatever's going on with the hot foot. So then they call me and they're like, Hey, um, we got some weird findings and they end up finding that, uh, some nice gentleman or woman, I guess, uh, decided to take like 15 or so cigarette butts and put them in the grade of my motor above my, so on the back of those, mercury's there's a little grade up on top um they slid them in there and they fell down on my throttle linkage 
So basically, as they got wet or I pressed on the throttle back and forth or whatever, they became jammed. Uh, and it could have happened at any speed, uh, any RPM, at any point in time. It just happened to be when I came in. So I will say I am very happy that it did not happen when I was doing like 68 miles an hour weaving between the islands down in Namakin because I could have potentially pulled an Aaron Teal. For people who don't know what happened to Teal, Teal lost yeah. control on a steering wheel when he was test driving a boat back in the day and jumped an island, uh, almost died. So, yeah. So, so was in tune just like, yo, Bart, you like, you hit a lot of cigs or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, they, they asked if my partner <laughs> smoked cigs. And I was like, what? Why? No. And they're like, well, would he have set them on your motor and they would have fallen in? I'm like, no, he doesn't smoke cigs. Nobody in my boat smokes cigs. Oh my um, gosh, that's such a dick move, dude. So, okay, so they end up in there, and it's obviously caused some issues. Uh, but do you, I mean, I guess because you don't, the, the up, what's the update? Like, yeah, you, yeah, do, I know do you, you think threw, you made a big social media post about this? Yeah, so I made a social media post about it. I got all the security camera footage from the resort. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, like everybody's been texting me for updates and stuff. Going to be completely honest. It was a holiday weekend and I also partook in the holiday weekend. I did not <laughs> go through uh, three nights of footage being like, yeah, this is how I want to spend my Memorial weekend. I had Don't my boat will. back. I wanted to go back out <laughs> in it. So uh, I'll get... the footage ain't going anywhere. Right. Like there's I'm going to be able to go through it and figure it out, hopefully. Right. Um, there's, you know, obviously not a promise of that, but I made a post to hopefully if someone had heard anything or something had came and contacted me. Um, I will say just there are rumors going around right now already that like Voight and I know who did it. We've already figured it out and like we're going through processes or whatever. That is a hundred percent false. So if anyone's hearing any rumors that like it was this person for sure, they know it was, I am telling you right now, I do not know for a fact who did it. I have theories, other people have theories, but I have no factual evidence. So none of that matters. But, yeah. but um, you do know it, it was none of your boys. It was none of your buddies. That was just no, like, it was none yeah, of the boys I'm, who stayed with me. Yeah. Well, and do you, I, I mean, already. do you think it was somebody just fucking around or do you think they honestly thought that that's what would happen? Uh, I, so I don't know if they knew that they were going to jam my throttle linkage. Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing is, is they knew it was my boat cause they had to avoid three boats to go to my boat Oh, sure. from where the sure. cigarettes yeah. got picked up. So it wasn't like a random, like, Oh, ha ha. I'm going to mess with this boat, like some worker or something like that. And I already talked to the resort about that. It wasn't, wasn't the workers. Um, from what we would be able to tell, but it was very much someone who knew it was my boat. I'm like, I've talked with friends about that too. We all play jokes on each other, unscrew graphs, maybe move reel handles on a spinning reel, throw beers in someone's live. Well, um, stuff like that. That's all good fun. No, no damage done. It's all easily repairable. It's just a nuisance. Even if that was the really drunk thought of someone, I still feel like it would have had to be malicious to some extent because like, dude, put the cigarette butts in someone's motor. Like, I think, I think when there's like, like something bad's going to happen. There. Yeah, yeah. Like there's right? no, like, like even <laughs> like, if it's like, ha ha, you found cigarettes, but like, that's gross. Like who, you know what? Like, well, it's like well, the motor too. It's not like they put them in your cup that. holder where it's like, yeah, dude, what happens if his cup holder smells like cigs? Like they're like, let's put it in the most expensive thing on the rig, which yeah. is the mothership, the motor. And I think if, if it was like some dude when he was hammered and he's like, yeah, you know what? Screw Bart anyways. And he put a cigarette in there and he went off on his night and said, yeah, whatever. But you said it was but, a bunch but, of them. But wait, yeah, if, no, if, there's like, a bunch if somebody of them. sat there and put a bunch <laughs> in, then it's like, dude, that's just a huge dick. Yeah. Move. Like yeah. you're a, you're a huge, you're a huge dick. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not cool. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone hears anything or whatever, my DMs are wide open. I would love to hear from people if they know anything factual or can tell me they heard something or whatever. But 
basically any leads I've gotten is one name. So, and oh, we've all thought oh, it's hey, one name oh, as well. Oh, but, oh, yeah. Well, hey, I'm, hopefully. But I, mean, I have nothing, nothing factual. No, and that's yeah. what I want on the statement right now. I have nothing factual. What as could, right now. say it's that one name, say it's somebody completely different. What could that person do right now to make it right? I like I I would be like, dude, I want them to send me a pecan pie from Perkins, <laughs> a handwritten apology note, a case of beer, and they open up the gesture that if there was a quick repair fee or anything like that, I'd gladly pick it, pick up that fee. That's what I would say. What 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 do they need to do right now to to make amends with you? Uh I'm gonna do no comment on that because I don't really think there is any. Oh, once he's taking I, it to the yeah. grave. Once I figure out who it is, I'm going to bring justice. Around, <laughs> They're so. dead to me. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll be very well known. That's the thing. It will be very well known once I know, or if I know who it is, it will be oh. very well known. <laughs> I picture, I picture I'm watching like, like, I'm in a public place, maybe filling up gas, and like those court shows are on, you know, like, like a Judge Judy or something. And I see Adam sitting right there explaining this in one of those courtrooms. I feel like oh. this is more of like a Jerry Springer scenario. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you the Marbell Man? Best results are in. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, yeah. You are the Marbell Man. I yeah. knew it. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> oh my god. Well, hey, at least nothing seriously bad happened. I mean, yeah. that's good. Um yeah. but yeah, no, in city, all seriousness, if they if they came to me and said like admitted who it was or something, and I had proof of it, I'd maybe not press charges. <laughs> They'll still get banned from any tournament ever in Minnesota, but I'd maybe not press charges. But if no one comes forward and then I find it, you're you're gonna have a bad time i can yeah. i can tell you that much because it was also done on a national park which is like extremely against federal law so Dang. you can have a good time with that one from what i've from the research i've done oh, so man who is hopefully the they just come man? forward and tell me it was who is them the and get man? over it yeah the marlboro <laughs> man who is the marlboro man <laughs> We'll keep you guys. We'll keep you guys posted. And the and gingerbread a, man. The gingerbread yeah. man. <laughs> this is a good reminder to rate, subscribe, and follow along because this story will be told again, and we will, we will. You oh, know, this is gonna flare up. Yeah, like we will. We'll <laughs> give you updates as it comes in from Adam. You know, I'm, I'm honestly like so interested to see how this plays out. I'm, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, Either way, I, I'm glad you're safe. Brother. Yeah, no, we're all good. And just a reminder to people, like, pranks are all fun and good. Don't mess with someone's boat. Yeah. That's like, there is there is a fine line. Don't motor boat, like, permanent but damage. that's not even a good prank. It's not like, even no, good. That's it's the not thing. Even like, there's good, prank. good pranks. Like, yeah. like because there, there are pranks that, like, would have been, like, I would say more involved than that, that I would have just been, like, damn. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And that is yeah. not one of too. them. Like, <laughs> in college, like, got me. <laughs> In college, me and Ryan and some of the other teams oh. sometimes before Derby, we would do pranks, but just put little like put little tokens here, put little stuff here, like weird baits or do whatever. Sometimes we would even flip people's graphs around and plug them in. So if they turn it on in the morning, their screen is upside down. And it's like before a tournament, they're like, oh, oh. like oh, that's, that's, that's a good one. That's a funny that's a one. That's a good I've one. And it's, one. and it's clever and it's crafty or loosen some guy's drags. We've definitely done that plenty of times. You're <laughs> loosen the drags where your first hook set, you're like, what? <laughs> that's that's like that's at least clever and there's some poise there but that one is just not that one's just stupid that's just, that's just, just dumb just dumb <laughs> you're good. you're a dick and you're dumb <laughs> <laughs> Damn oh <you're> man <laughs> all right well, all right what else we got let's burn there. a couple of these more okay so this guy oh. says uh i want another season of the one uh large mouth though or maybe so well I, I don't know if this guy even knows what he's talking about he said largemouth though. I think he's saw he's mixing up chasing ghosts in the one, I think. Uh no, or he's maybe... probably saying do the one, but only largemouth. I can see that. It says, I want another season of the one, parentheses, largemouth though, or maybe some good stories from it. Okay. Yeah, okay. we could eventually do I a think story we should. time going through the one. That would be a good yeah. thing for an episode. We got plenty of stories. We could have Brock on and rip through. Oh that. yeah. Yeah, oh, that would yeah. be fun. And yeah. I think maybe we should revamp it someday. I would love to do it again. I've told you that every year. The one 2.0? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would love to. I'm all in on that. Was some of the most fun, just fun bass. It, fishing that was I've fun though, because we like time. went and fished some of those lakes we would have never went to, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Me yeah, and we, Ryan had a great weekend one time. We did. We, we opened our eyes and listened to a Vikings lakes. game in a Casey's parking lot. Yeah, that was the first time I ever had Casey's pizza, actually. Really? <laughs> dude, we yeah, hit Casey right. hard yeah. in that series. Uh, yeah, if yeah. anyone watching now, they'd probably think Casey's was a sponsor. Yeah, we bro. were just like, we were shouting them out. We love you, Casey's, and yeah. your pizza and your delicious eats. Yeah, no, yeah. I would I would love to do the one again. So, yeah, I, I appreciate that comment. Yeah, if yeah. Sobe wants to do it, I'm all in. I'll make time. We'll do it. Hell yeah. Uh, this one says, we need a geared up segment. That's from B-Rock by the way okay we can i was actually gonna say the guy our guest today could be a good one for geared up yeah, he'd yeah. Probably maybe have some we'll push tackle and shit but so we'll see just if he you, gives any just of it for up. you b rock we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll push this till a little later we'll put we'll we'll, yeah. we'll get you we'll get you um shout out right. b rock shout out b rock um let's see this one says another lead weight scandal when will it end so i don't know if you guys saw that i think he's talking about the one that target wall i put out uh, is that the one that the guy put like two and a half pounds in? Yeah, two yeah, point six that, nine pounds not... of lead in a large mouth. Yeah, like you're asking uh, when's so, it gonna end? At a big that bass guy's just bash a event. fucking idiot. Like, I, 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 bash event too. That away. I saw the headline, but I didn't click on it or research anything into it. Where was this at? What was Toledo Bend? Toledo okay. Bend, big Dude, bass. Two bash. and a half pounds is. Could you imagine picking up a two and a half pounder that weighs five, and you're like, what? Or or a five <laughs> that you're like. Hmm. Seven, yeah. six? Seven, seven, six. No, no. <laughs> Especially no. at an event where they're weighing a ton of big ones. Like yeah, this was at a big bass bash, wasn't it? Yes. That's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> but it was 500K first prize or whatever. It was like there was oh, some wow. serious money on the line. Yeah. Um, which is probably why it went down that way. Uh, let's see what else we got here. That's unreal. Chinese New Year in Minnesota is the year of mosquito. Holy balls, they thick. Yeah. <laughs> who, who wrote that? Who wrote uh, that? Th that that is uh Instagram handle Cunningham Fishing. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he's right. The mosquitoes yeah. are really bad. The June bugs just started showing up. Uh there was definitely some sort of fly hatch when I was up on Cabotogama too. I don't know. We got all insects showing up this year. There was all kinds of stuff going on. There Should was maple like, water here. Caddis were going yeah. stupid. <laughs> Yeah. That's going to be the double-edged sword is past two years, the water was so low, but it was so dry and not buggy. And now this year, I think we are going to totally forget as folks from Minnesota or the Midwest, just what a mosquito year is like it. Cause they are freaking thick. Dude. dude. They are mega I, thick. I had a bad time this weekend. I'm, I'm glad I closed the back of my truck quick. So I'm, I'm yeah. very nervous <laughs> for your guys' this turning Tuesday way in. Oh, 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 yeah, it's gonna be buggy. Truth, truth. We'll get the maybe, smoker rolling, dude. We'll yeah, maybe we're some pants or smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just get out the date. Right. Yeah. You got anything else, Pink? Uh, two more. Uh, one of them actually. So, this one says, figure out how to go back to every week with the podcast. Well, good luck with that. Wait. It would be a great time to let you guys know that today's sponsor is absolutely nobody. But if somebody would like to step up right now and bring that question to light, the emails are open, the DMs are open, hit us up. Uh, we, we would love to bring it back weekly. We're, uh, we're hoping to. Here's the thing. If you guys want it weekly and you want to see more shows of Pass the Barb, go leave a bunch of ratings, subscribe, boost up all that stuff. We are very we'll close to making we'll some moves. So, um, tell your brother, yeah, we want to make this a much bigger thing and do it way more often. Uh, and I think all of us are pretty like involved in wanting to make that happen. So yeah, the more feedback you give, the better. I know we ask for it a lot, like actually being genuine and not joking around the, yeah. uh, feedback and like those ratings and things go a long ways. So if you guys leave some more, we'll, uh, get a couple sponsors on board, hopefully get this train rolling a little more often. All right. One more. So this one, just give me one talk, one point on each one so we don't drag this on any longer than it has to. This guy is just asking, how do you determine what lakes are worth revisiting after a failed first attempt? Give me just like one on it. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I have good slash recent fisheries data or intel from somebody that I trust that has been there or knows something that I don't about it, 
I mean, sometimes you have a bad day out there. You don't find, you don't find the deal or whatever. But if I, if I have really good information and I had a, a shitty day, I'm still going back. Yeah. But yeah, there's, fisher, there's fisheries been... data is number one. If I have like current past couple of years, I'm going. I think it's, I mean, I think it is different open water to ice fishing too. The one thing I would say is like, even pink that place where we caught all those 16s this year. Yep. Fished. I've fished it, man, 30 to 50 times in my life. And I've only hit it good, like three and every other time has been terrible. So there's some lakes that are just like that. Like it just, but I don't know what species they're talking about either. Yeah. So my one thing would be, and this is not, data driven anything like that but i feel like you guys will understand me vibes 100 percent, dude yeah there yeah, are yeah, some vibes. lakes that you just get on you fish for a bit and you're like i don't like this and you leave and you're like don't need to go back there yeah. don't really believe in yeah. it and there's some that you stay there like all day and you maybe catch one and you're like mm, i feel like i'm just missing it and then you like get off and you just all you think about is wanting to go back like vibes i think that's yeah. a really because it's thing. like your type of lake you're like man yeah like that is yeah. my shit. Like, for how yeah. much data is out there, which fall data, that's dope. And for how awesome electronics are, there's mm. still that angling intuition that when you get to a place and it just feels spooky, it feels right. It feels like big fish live here. Maybe the cover looks great or it just sets up how potentially you could fish them well, depending upon how you fish. Like <sighs> vibes, dude. I would Or go if it's like devoid of life and you're like, ain't it, brother? Yeah. I've been here for one hour and I'm out. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You get those <laughs> feelings big time too. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, I feel like confidence goes so far in fishing too, where like, if you are at a lake and you're not catching them and you're like, this lake sucks. I don't know anything about this lake, blah, blah, blah. I'm not feeling about go leave, get to a different lake. Yeah. Because if you're not, if you don't have that feeling that it can even go down, it's just never going to go down. But if you, yeah. But if you get to a lake that even you struggled on, but you got that feeling like, dude, I know, I just know it can go down out here. It dude, it'll go down yeah yes i agree all right well thanks everybody for sending those in we'll do that more often uh keep an eye on our instagram for that we'll we'll post one of those question boxes every once in a while and just feel free to shoot whatever crazy thoughts you got in there but yeah all right bring them in bring them in so we do an intro i'll do it ladies and gentlemen boys and girls introducing an up-and-coming star in the bass fishing game a supernova angler he has kicked people's butts all the way from freaking alabama to the canadian border not only does he fish bass derbies he's fished walleye derbies he won the college bracket competed in the bass master classic ladies and gentlemen boys and girls east and father give him a round of applause give him a round of applause what up brother thank you thank you for being here thanks for having me so where are you at right now and and what are you doing i just got home from getting my boat serviced at intune and but yeah, I've been in Gun Rapids here for about 48 hours now. So just got home for the summer. Easton, I was telling the boys before the show, but maybe you can let the listeners know you and I ran into each other at uh Waypoint today. But uh how many motors do you have on that? Wow. It's a night or hours, hours do you have on that motor <laughs> that you got from uh is it a nitro that you got from mm-hmm. Bassmaster? So yeah. how many hours are on that motor on that nitro already? Three hundred. That's when did you get that boat? Um, I think I got it early February. Okay. That is impressive. That is impressive. So needless to say, you've been living on the water. <laughs> Last month or so, or two months, yeah. It's been a lot of bassing. I venture to guess you enjoy side imaging. Oh, I'm yeah. I spent some time behind <laughs> my units. He's like, I sure. dabble. I dabble. I dabble. <laughs> okay, so, so give kind of the the listeners a background story and yourself bring me from age five to age 17 what's your background in fishing where, where, where are you from and who got you into it and yeah tell me about the young years of east and father gill i guess yeah getting into it has been 100 percent my dad my dad's been a diehard tournament guy since since you know since he was young since he was my age um but yeah i was just kind of born into it you know it was i think i did my first tournament with him when i was three and from then on, it was just, you know, just traveling around the state with him doing bass and walleye stuff. Um, and then when I, the summer, or the yeah, the summer after seventh grade, my dad came home from work one day and asked if we want to start a high school fishing team. And obviously I was all over that. 
So <laughs> you're like, that's the dumbest thing you have ever <laughs> asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty <Yeah>. much. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm all in. So we got that rolling and I had a my class in high school was, you know, where we all love to fish. So right after the get go, we had a big group of kids who, you know, got the team up and at it. And then, you know, we, we fished through high school and then my partner in high school, Nick and I, we decided to move on to fish in college after. So our senior year, we really started reaching out to a whole bunch of college teams. Um, and eventually landed on Montevallo down in Alabama, mainly just cause they were one of the best funded programs at the time. And I really wanted to be in the South just to learn how to fish in the South cause I knew if I wanted to make a run at it ever, like that was something that needed to happen. So that's mainly why I picked to go down there. And then, yeah, I've been there the last four years. And I just graduated a month ago. So and I might go back for a fifth year. I haven't decided yet, but regardless, I'm going to live down there for at least one more year while I do the opens. Trying that's to get awesome. another year of that college eligibility. <laughs> that's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Victory lap. Do a victory oh, I like lap. It. So Easton, get before we get into Montevallo, who is all in that Grand Rapids class? Because that was like a stacked group of fishermen, if I remember that area, right? Yeah, it was me, Nick, and then there was a kid named Noah Grochon that was really into it. And then Kobe was actually the great ahead of us, but he was on the team when we when we uh, started it. And Okay. So how many yeah. guys from that class work for Wired to Fish now? Uh, Nick and Kobe. So two. Wow. And there's a couple one of, there's there's one, one kid on the team currently that that works for them too. So there's three. Oh my god. That's gosh. awesome, dude. That's straight up jobs in the fishing industry. That's incredible. And that's and I feel like that's the the sweetest deal about the high school fishing thing. Obviously, it gets people addicted to tournaments, but like I think it opens up the passion even more for people to go, well, maybe I want to work in this industry somewhere and compete and just I don't know. I feel like it puts your full tilt into fishing more. I guess you probably have more experience since you started the club, but do you get that yeah, vibe too? Like you said, it's definitely a gateway into the fishing industry. If you, if you want to take that route, I would say college is even more that way. Cause you know, every rules meeting that we go to, you know, it's the big shots from every company. So you can really start making connections. Every time you go to a rules meeting, you can talk to, you know, the Abu Garcia guys or the, the real tree guys, or really anyone who goes to those, uh, those places and you never know where that you know you you introduce yourself to someone you never know what they'll turn into one day so uh, that's what yeah. i always tell people is just you know talk to as many people as you can when you're out fishing tournaments you never know what that'll turn into so but you remember our first high school national we did together we did yeah and and, and adam and in Dardanelle, arkansas easton awesome lake have you been there in july i've been there in october every time i've been there oh it was tough wow. in july <laughs> it was tough. we also didn't know what we were doing at all but it was tough <laughs> we had no clue actually we we kind of graphed around for a bit thinking we could maybe find offshore fish and you know after 20 minutes probably we were like i'm not feeling this yeah i will say <laughs> i fished a tournament there and you did have to catch offshore ones to win <laughs> yeah they it, the tournament did get one cranking so yeah. we we were on the right program but then we ended up what were we throwing buzz baits off like a flat or something yeah. in the morning and a rattle trap and we could get like a couple and we after our bite after probably 7 30 in the morning nothing <laughs> that's when you know you're on them yeah and like, we gotta catch them in the first 30 minutes east and you've been tournaments so long with your dad you probably remember this is during the days too when Every team, like especially if you had anything offshore, you had like two buoys. You'd like throw a buoy here or a buoy there, and you'd kind of go like, you know, you remember those days where people are like, you know, this is kind of my shit, you know. I'm just you old kinda, enough where I can remember buoys, those days, right, dude? But probably people younger than you, they'll never, they'll never know that or never. That was like such a big deal, mm -hmm. Damn. dude. The yeah. first, <laughs> the first that just made me remember the one of the first. Wednesday night or Soby and I ever won. We found an offshore rock pile. And this is before anybody had GP, like we didn't have GPS or anything. And on my phone, I had like a Google Maps thing that you could drop one pin on, but it yeah. could not go off of it. <laughs> so I dropped the yeah. pin on it on my phone and we had to find our way home. And back to the lake the next day yeah. by street signs because I couldn't <laughs> plug in the directions or we'd lose our rock pile. Bart was 16 and I was 15. I don't even know if I could drive, dude. And, and he had it and he literally had it. He's like, all right, so now now we'll go to it. And then I, I'm throwing the buoy off the back. Like, got it. 
And we did. We won. We had 15 pounds <laughs> had, for three. <laughs> Easton, could you imagine pulling up to a, an open and just hucking out a buoy? <laughs> Dude, like, I'm fishing this right yeah. here. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back, Easton. All right. So now Dude, talk someone to pulls up to your boulder on leech, I want you pulling out an orange buoy and just chucking it at them. Be like, that's yeah. my bowl. Watching that thing on spool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> so talk to us about your summer plans. Up. What's that? Talk to us about your summer plans. Where where does fishing go from you for you right here? So I actually still have college tournaments this summer and also opens um this Friday. Actually, I leave for Saginaw Bay in Michigan. That's the that's the next college event. And then shortly after that, I have the next open on you follow Oklahoma. Nice. Um, and then after that, I haven't even looked that far, but it's lots of tournaments this summer. Open uh, college. Which one on the schedule are you most looking forward to right now? Leech. Okay. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> that's fair. And where where's your guys' college standing? And because I think you guys won team of the year last year, but did you win school of the year? Or is that the yeah, same we thing? Did. It's it's oh. not official yet, but we we did. We won. What about this year? We did. Really? We we just sealed the deal at Pickwick last week, so I don't think anyone can catch us now. And how many folks on the Montevallo team would you say are not from the area that they kind of came there to fish from way out of state? I'd say at least three quarters of the team. There's a really? there's quite a how many Minnesota guys are on Montevallo now? Six? I think six. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty solid. That's super solid. And I would say all the all of those six are, you know, they they contribute to the team heavily. So yeah, so it's what? It'd be you, Nick, Blair. Brennan, Charlie, Brennan, Charlie, and then Solomon, who's actually oh. graduated. Yeah, Solomon, Solomon our boy. We fished uh, Solomon fished, Glenn. Yeah, mm-hmm. the only guy who could ever get us on Cedar. <laughs> what? Um. So, how does the team of the year work again? It's been a few years since I feel like I knew how this worked. How do you guys? Do this? Back when Soby was fishing Vermont. college derbies, they were stealing Mark Rose stat uh, pictures out of Walmart. After we were a team of the year too. Yeah, we were That's- a team of the year in drinking for sure. <laughs> and it was uncontested. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there. I think they made rules after that. <laughs> so how do you win team of the year? <laughs> So now, from all yeah. valid, it went uh, school year. It's Bassmaster, MLF, and ACA. Those are the big ones, and it's your top two boats from all those events. And there's there's also school sanctioned events where it's just your top boat, and those are just events that like you know Montevallo will put on, and they'll get fifty boats or whatever, and those are only worth a hundred points. But you get ten of those a year, which you know that adds up in the end. Yeah, but yeah, every other every major event, you get your top two boats, and I think it's like twenty four hundred points are up for grabs. And wh- what do you guys win if you win school of the year, team of the year? Um, actually, don't even know. Okay, I don't really pay attention to the prizes because everything we win goes back to the team. So that's how our team works. Yeah, that's, that's sweet. Just just because we get everything paid for, that's just kind of how we, you know, that's how it, we make it work. So it's like the whole thing with bass tournaments in general. Really, all you want is the bracking rights, right? <laughs> Paying no, the bills is cool it, and all, but so I just want to be able to say now. I did it. It feels different now, yeah. And there yeah. should be like major. There should be a major prize for school year. I think like if it awarded the whole team, whether it's from Bass Pro or a yeah. sponsor that steps up, like that would be sweet. I just feel like everything's more like legit now and like sanctioned and stuff. Like Sam, when we were doing it, like we were still like they just gave you money. Like this wasn't like a scholarship thing. Like we cashed like checks. Yeah, it was tour- really wild west. Then, you know? So Easton, I would be curious to hear. We're gonna go. I feel like we'll go into a bunch of like the really good tournaments you've had, but like also to piggy this back on a tournament, Pink and Sobe have both been to that is notorious in the college fishing ranks. What is the worst tournament you think you've been at, weather wise, fishing wise, just? experience wise where you're like man do i really love this i would be curious to hear because i know so i would say i mean it helped being from the north we were at lake of the ozarks i think two februarys ago and it was like it was blowing like 30 and the morning was like 20 degrees or something like that and you know ozarks is a big lake and it, yeah. it, there's like big sections east to west and it was blowing straight out of the east like massive waves and like we got to our first place and everything is just completely frozen 
front deck is straight ice and every rod guide is frozen and it's just i was thankful i had, de I had dealt with that before being as crazy as i am fishing for fall smallmouth and stuff but i couldn't even think of like being from alabama trying to deal with that like you might as well keep it on the trailer because you'd be just completely spun out yeah but that yeah was, they don't that know that's that time where i was yeah exactly that was a time where I was like, wow, this is crazy. I, I might not, I, I probably shouldn't even be out here. So, and Sobe, what was your infamous? You got, what, what are you referring to? Which one are you referring to? <laughs> the I'll one just in say it. Yeah. Pink? Carlisle. Carlisle. Yeah. 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 Dude, there's some, there's, have you ever, have you fished much in Illinois? I fished Good. one lake in Illinois. <laughs> you fished That's what? That's too many. That's one too many. Yeah. I went to a lake called Lake Vandalia in Illinois one time. Well, okay. I guarantee you it's got more bass than Carlisle. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, do, I guarantee it. <laughs> I think Illinois has some good fishing opportunities. Anybody that's from there is definitely going to come out a grinder. Um, but <laughs> some of the reservoirs they have there, dude, there's, like, no bass in it. And Carlisle had none, like, maybe 10 in this okay. whole place. There were, yeah. there were seven teams in the entire tournament that weighed a bass. <laughs> so we made nationals because he weighed they one. They didn't bass. even fill, and it was they I had, a bass. There was, there was, <laughs> they were gonna send the top ten teams on. There were only seven teams that even caught a fish, not like at a good limit. <laughs> yeah, like legit caught one. Like we were, we were, <laughs> and the vibe was like that in practice. We were and it was, a, it was a multi-day like, day tournament. It was a multi-day tournament, and they still cut the field. I was like, yeah. not gonna let everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, like everyone that didn't make it to was like thank god thank god i'm not going back out and like what day the, the day of the tournament i don't even know what the wind speed was but it was a lot was bad. yeah and like they have like a harbor there with like a break wall and stuff so it's like very calm on the inside and there is just like six and seven footers crashing on this wall and like <laughs> at this time dude all no no one in college is running like Sick, yeah. Boat. Everyone now has pretty nice boats for the most part. This is back in college when everyone like was running 17 footers with 115s, and everyone's looking at this. And, and Kevin Hunt it was the turn of an FLW one, and he was like, We're going. And everyone was like, <laughs> You're like, Serious? <laughs> and then there's like two dudes in two 16 foot bass tracker, the aluminum sit by each other, like, I don't know. They're like, I they guess we're went. fishing this harbor all day, and uh. And like everyone else, I just remember oh, who the hell was it? Because all the so Bemidji bad. guys were staying with us then, or like in the same area. And we were all talking the night before the tournament. And I was like, where, where do you think you're going to go, dude? And I remember this because I don't know him that well, but uh, Gaffrin was there. Yeah. I swear to God, I, I talked to that guy maybe two times in my whole life. And there was one of them. And I, I remember this. This is so funny. He probably wouldn't remember this if I asked him, but. He goes, he goes, dude. Uh, so me and Kason were there for like a week pre-fishing for this. Like we were like, we're all in. And uh we literally we dumped the boat in first cut. We caught two nice ones, and we're like, oh, how hard, how hard can this be? We didn't get a bite the rest of the week. Not one bite. We talked to that. So I'm talking to Gaffrin there, and uh, I was like, Where do you think you're gonna start? And like no, everyone was giving all information because everyone was like, I have nothing. He was like, Well. We got a bite on Tuesday off this one log, so I think we're going to start there. <laughs> <laughs> this is like five days later. And uh, <laughs> and then and then every night, like Sam knows, everyone was just getting bombed and fishing at the pond at the resort across the street because we were just whipping bass out of this pond. <laughs> and everyone was like, do you think you could cast far enough over land to hit this pond? Like that was a thought. Like people we're are kind of calculating it. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> that was wow. yeah. Anyway, I just had to remember that one. We'll we'll have to dive. In. Have we ever dove into that full story on this podcast? No, it's with too Honor? it's too long. Yeah, oh, no, we'll do it a different time cool. without Easton. But that's a good precursor for uh, yeah, the good old old school college. It's probably days. The, one of the worst college fishing tournaments ever run. Yeah, look it up if people one. are curious. I think There's Cade Loffenberg and Wyatt Stout won it. I think they weighed four they fish on day one and zero on day two. Yeah, 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 they got the dub, and they <laughs> and were they like, won. "We're on them." We're that on was like them. a hard dub. Yeah. <laughs> I think they everyone won was like, by "God, like these... four to six pounds and every... as well." <laughs> and everyone was like, "God, these guys are dialed." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so for anyway. people that don't know, Easton uh, won the college bracket. So, gotta we'll get into the whole classic and everything. But 
So what was going down for that college bracket? Like, obviously, all these college kids go do this whole thing uh, all year. You want to get to the bracket. Get to the bracket, and you're like, okay, there's eight of us. One of them's my best friend, and I need to beat all of them so I can go to the class. Yeah, it was definitely a weird dynamic being, you know, I'm competing against Nick, and then we had another Montevallo team there. So half the field is my teammates, which was really kind of interesting. And then – did you just Auburn try to get in all their heads just so you knew you could eliminate half of them just out the get-go? You should have thrown no. Marlboros in their engine. That could have worked. Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> what, was, what was the banter like the night before? Were you guys, like, nervous as hell, shitting bricks? No, it was all the Montevallo guys stayed in one cabin, and we were all just, like, we hardly even talked to each other. Like, we couldn't even look at each other. It was, it was really weird. I didn't like it. But... <laughs> <laughs> it was... Yeah, that's all I try to cook dinner for each other, and you're just like, No, I don't want that. Get away from me, actually. (laughs) Going into it, did you did you feel like did you feel like confident or did you feel like damn these got like these guys are like can fish, like I might be screwed here? I felt confident, but I didn't I didn't really know what I had found, I guess I could say. Like where was this too for the people east and like what type of lake was it and everything? It was the middle of Kansas, and for Minnesota guys, I would compare it to Washington Stella if you took out Stella. Like Lake Washington is how I would compare the lake. Interesting. Um, so dirty, shallow rock, like yep. not a lot of vegetation, free. some maybe. but What what was like the practice, practice period like that they gave you for that? It was, it was three days, if I remember. No, it was two days. It was two days. Two there days. was one day, and then there was a – there was – they called it like a like a practice like a official practice day like they gave you like it was an official takeoff and that sort of thing and you're you're off at three um but yeah it was you know i when i was sick and all that i i spent a bunch of time at home on google earth and i showed up to the lake with like 200 waypoints on this little tiny lake from google earth of just wow. like every pebble hmm. and every stump and everything and I rolled up to the first, it was a, it was like a big boulder on a channel swing bank. And I throw my spook over it and catch a two and a half pound largemouth very first cast. And I was just like, hmm. like, that's interesting. Go to the next boulder, one swirls on it, misses it. And I was just like, wow. Okay. And then I was just assuming I could run every one of my boulders I had marked, which ended up being the case. And then I just started graphing all these channel swing banks, looking for the right, right size rock. And I ended up dialing that in quite a bit more. Wow. Um, and then. <clears throat> the second day was actually supposed to be canceled. There was like 40 mile an hour winds, but they ended up letting us go. So I just picked up. No a way. Bait. Really? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> picked up a spinnerbait going down the bank and I hit this point and I set the hook and it was a four pound large mouth. And I just panned over there on live scope. And it was just like dot, 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 dot from the fish all the way to the point. And I was just like, this is something here. Like, this is good. And, you know, I obviously didn't make another cast through that fish back and pulled the shoulder and left. And that's the spot that ended up carrying me through the whole event was that point right there. Wow. That's sweet. That is sweet. And that's super sweet. Just kind of your back end work for Google Earth ended up panning out. Because I feel like anybody who's done hardcore bass and they've done that. And it seems like sometimes the waypoints or stuff you find on Google Earth is like so irrelevant. But obviously sometimes it can play too. So, Dude, there are four boulders on Cabotogama that I could not find. Like I on Google Earth, I was like, there is a boulder and I am on top of it. And I'm like looking around on 360 inside imaging live. And I'm like, this boulder does not exist. Like, I don't know what I'm looking moving. at right now. Oh, Bart has little work to do on go move, Earth And I'm game. like, BS, man. <laughs> so final moments of the college bracket after you'd won. What, what did you feel right away? And then what was it like kind of af- yeah, after the event finished? It was like that winning moment was like, I've never felt so much emotion before after everything that I just went through those like months prior with the being sick and everything. And yeah, just being able to overcome that and then to win it, it was just, I couldn't believe it. And I went against Tucker Smith, the kid wins everything he does, it seems like, and I beat him somehow. And it was just, and I knew how life-changing it would be because I wasn't planning on being able to do the opens. I, I wasn't financially able. And I knew after winning that, I'd be able to. So that was super. And then you saw the leech. <laughs> yeah, a couple months after, I saw the leech on the schedule. That's unreal. But <laughs> it's crazy how all that worked. It's crazy. That is life-changing. That is okay. so sweet. So 
obvious like what was who's the coolest person that reached out to you after you won that probably yeah, like Ballinick. Bar. yeah. Ballinick did mm-hmm. that's Maybe. sweet i can see that we had him on here did you that's ever cool. see soby do you know what book he happens to be reading oh gosh what books did he have in his bookshelf what one was he on? <laughs> that was good. That was all time. I don't know if you Wait. listen to Pass the Barber or not, Easton. You don't need to lie to us. Actually, yeah, you do. You listen to it all the time, right? We're the yeah. number one outdoor podcast in the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting no, a Pass the Barber Montevillo rap boat. But that's <laughs> that's so electric. So then from the time you won the bracket. How got much Easton time... in a blender right now. <laughs> <laughs> But you can rate us later. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I just got the text. I'm here. You guys. Either way, how much time passed between when you won the bracket and practice of the Bassmaster Classic? Because when you're sitting on that, like when you're sitting on, oh, yeah, like I'm going to the Classic, that's unreal. The anticipation, the buildup for that alone, I feel like would be. I'm going to the freaking. Cl- I'm competing in the classic. Like mm-hmm. so I won the bracket on October second, and I believe practice for the classic started March nineteenth. So, did you go spend some pre-practice time down there? I did around Thanksgiving, of last well last Thanksgiving. I, I we probably differ in views of Grand Lake pretty largely. I would imagine I me and Han are probably dislike that lake substantially more what, than you. What was pre-practice like? And then what was your normal practice like out there? So and not just the fishing, but even just like the vibes. Yeah. Pre-practice, I I took, I fished maybe a half hour over the three days of pre-practice. I just wanted to make sure I saw the whole lake and just kind of, I wanted to be able to be like, okay, if I get this kind of rock bank, I can, you know, have light bulb go off. Okay, I saw one there, here, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I mainly just graphed and looked around in pre-practice. I marked all kinds of brush and rock piles. Um, and I did take a couple casts and when I did fish, I caught some, I caught one four pounder, but I knew like things would be different. Like I wasn't too excited over that. And then I get there for official practice, <clears throat> ended up working with Kyle Patrick all week, which was a really cool deal for me. That's a dude that I've been looking up to now. And, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I ended up starting in drowning Creek on grand. I don't know how familiar you guys are. That it, but, that's like halfway down. On the east side, right? Yep. Yeah. That's one of the biggest creeks up to the east. Yep. But I started in there and I, like a half hour in, I found this bank where I got, I caught a five and a four back to back and I shook off like eight more on this one bank. Oh. And then I was able to duplicate that all over in Drowning Creek. And I was just like, holy, like this lake's awesome. Like this is so easy. And I ended up leaving that creek and I didn't get a bite the rest of the day. I was just like, this is weird. Like that sounds like my Grand Lake experience. <laughs> You're like, that's fine. That's except fine. For that, <laughs> except for that catching them part and feeling like it's yeah. Really except good. for the finding the bank that you could duplicate. The second part I relate to heavily. Well, that was the thing. I could only duplicate it in Drowning Creek. As soon as I left, I'd find a bank that looked exactly the same, and there wouldn't be a thing on it. Interesting. So, that is what's very weird about that place and hard mm-hmm. to explain to people. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's, it's a crazy lake that way. But day two, I think I only got like three bites all day, and they were all small. So then I was just kind of like, you know, this. I don't. I really had no clue what was going on. And then day three of practice, I it was like the same thing. I got like six bites all day for like eight pounds, like absolutely terrible. Um, and then we had an off day. And then we had an official practice day. It was the same deal. You go take off and you fish till three, that sort of thing. Um, and then that day I had Kyle go start and drowning and like five minutes in, he texted me like, dude, five pounder, like they're still here. And I was just like, okay, I got that in my back pocket. And I started looking for secondary deals, ended up finding a mag draft bite on little rock points, windblown rock points. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, that's really all I had. I had drowning Creek and a mag draft bite to run with going into the tournament that sounds reliable (laughs) (laughs) what could go wrong yeah heading into the bass master classic you're like backup plan swim bait bite here we go (laughs) (laughs) why not dude if there's a tournament to have a swim bait bite and swing on though like why yeah oh for sure (laughs) um no so when you get down there and you start to go through like the whole practice week and everything like when did it hit you actually that oh this is the classic um 
during actual practice, like out on the water, it didn't hit me at all. Like Grand's a big lake, 50 boats. I hardly saw anyone. But it was the night of champions probably is when it hit me, walking into there with, you know, us behind Matt Robertson. You know, obviously he's a goofball and he's the star of the show pretty much. And then, you know, I'm standing next to Polinick and Gussie and all my idols. It's just crazy. Um, and then media day was also a super eye-opening experience. Yeah, what was media day like? It was, it was stressful. Honestly, I'm not even like I, I hardly even had any media on me, and it was stressful for me. I couldn't imagine being like you know Gussie who just won the classic. All, all the media he had, like it would be so overwhelming. But Dang. just you're just sitting in your boat, like trying to rig as much as you can because you have like no time during the week, and you constantly have you know all the company representatives coming up to you like, "Hey, can we do a quick interview?" Blah blah blah. And you're just like, yeah, and you throw your stuff down and talk to them for a minute and then, you know, rig for another minute and here comes someone else. It's, and it's like that for like four hours straight, just straight madness. It's crazy. Wow. Is the so, most uttered phrase at media day, let me finish my FG knot? Because <laughs> it's got to it's gotta be up there. Not for me because I don't tie FG knots, but. <laughs> what? what? You don't tie an FG? That's, I think He's on Team Stoles, he exists. dude. Wow. What do you, what do you tie? I I tie at Crazy Alberto. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Dang. Right. Crazy Alberto can get you the dang class. I am questioning <laughs> everything I've ever done right now. Yeah, dude, you you ain't tying the right fucking knots. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So le so leading up to the event, like. Cause you knew you were fishing the classic, like as soon as you won the bracket. Right. So you had, that's a good, how, how much time is that? How many months? Roughly, roughly five months. I would say five months. So for, for those five months, I would say like, how aggressively did you go out of your way to tell people you were fishing the classic? Oh, not at all. <laughs> Cause I feel like if any of these guys are fishing the classic, like people going to know about it. <laughs> No, that's, <laughs> I guess that's, that's not my personality, I guess. Yeah. You seem like a pretty high strung guy. So I, I can tell that that's. <laughs> what did, what did your dad and your family think about it? Not, not oh, just when you qualified, but when you went down there and they got to see you, they could see you in, in the arena and the stage, like in the moment. Yeah. What did yeah. they think? They were, they were completely mind blown about it. They just kept telling me like, you know, embrace this. Like, this is what you've worked for pretty much that kind of thing. And it was, it was super cool to be on that stage and to look in the crowd and have all my family in the crowd. Like the light would shine onto them and they like popped out at me. That was a super cool experience for me. That's had sick you, that they got to be there with you though. Mm -hmm. Had you or your dad or your family ever attended a classic before? I had went to the, the three before. Okay. Well, at Montevallo, we'd have a, you know, we'd load a car full of kids and we'd go to the classics while we were at school there. So I was at the three leading up to the one I was able to be in. That's unreal, dude. That's so unreal. And did the and team show up? Did the team show up to watch some some folks? Yeah, and all three days away and I had probably eight or ten kids on the team in the splash well there. And, you know, when I'd hold the fish up, they'd be just absolutely screaming like so loud. That was, that was also a awesome. cool experience. Did you trip. have any boats come follow you around on the water? I had my co-angler from Watchta, the Watchta Open, followed me around a little bit. That was kind of cool. Oh, really? But, yeah. Other than that, there was just kind of, you know, like guys would stop by and, you know, they'd be like, go Easton. And then they just like pull up and leave, that sort of deal. Hmm. <laughs> so, what well, I guess, I mean, this was your first classic, obviously. But uh, from what you experienced there, saw or whatever, what would you say, what was like one thing that, somebody that hasn't like fished the classic wouldn't like get to like, see or know about like what is like one thing that kind of goes on behind the scenes that yeah or just that you thought was like interesting you're like oh i never would have thought i guess like i mentioned earlier how you have like literally no time during the week like if you have five minutes you got to get something done in that five minutes or you're you like you know like at tulsa the setup was the lakes an hour and a half away from everything that happens right so I chose to stay at the lake because I didn't want like a hub to go out in the morning before the tournament. Like that would be terrible. So I decided to stay at the lake. <clears throat> and you know, you you pull your, you pull your trailer out and you got to drive an hour and a half to weigh in. So you get there at like six or seven, depending on your flight time. And then you weigh in, which takes a little while to go through the arena and everything. And then by the time you get out, it's eight or nine. You got to drive an hour and a half home. Yeah. And before you know it, it's eleven. You still have to rig your rods. So like. Wow. It's just crazy. All the guys, like Luke Palmer was like, dude, 
it doesn't matter if you, if you have one minute, you got to tie three poles in that one minute or else, you know, you're going to be up till midnight. And it was, it, I was like, yeah, whatever. But the first night I was just like, before I knew it, it was like 12, 31 in the morning. I had nothing done. And it's, <laughs> it's just crazy how everything's like, boom, boom, boom. And you got to like be on top of your game all week long. Wow. What's the fish care like in that deal? I've always want like for, especially for the classic, cause it takes so long. It's not like some of these other ones where, they kind of burn everybody through like what is there like a different process for that then i mean because you got to drive away plus you got the time to wait once you get in there yeah as, as, as soon as you take your boat out of the water that's where they check your fish they check them at the lake and then they give you a bag of ice for each side of your live well and you just put them on research and then you know drive back um I, I not from what i know i don't think there's any issues from fish dying from the lake to the to the way in i haven't the water is also so cold at that time of year yeah in general. i suppose yeah so one thing i saw in the back of the arena like underneath the stadium um they had like two big like tanker trucks and they had like some biologists there on staff and they were there was a bunch of people there kind of revolving around the fish care and then i think they ran them back in those big tanker trucks yeah Sylvie, you got to go through the classic way in Arena. Yeah, yeah, not was, kind of yeah. the same thing. Not the same. Did, not not kinda, holding a bass. Not more of a t-shirt cannon sort of. Yeah. <laughs> you, you strike me as a t-shirt cannon guy. <laughs> you strike me as the kind of guy that throws shit out before the game. That's just what I, <laughs> when I grow up. That's what I want to be. <laughs> Have you ever seen cool. someone shooting a t-shirt cannon who's not happy? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Those that is happy. That's fair. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I think the fish care and what they do there is pretty incredible especially because the lake is an hour and a half away like that is like like adam said too it's cold water but that's yeah the the hoops that they probably have to jump through and obviously the permits they pull i think oh, yeah. it's pretty i think it's super regulated a lot more than we even think because you just couldn't do that and mess up and kill a bunch of fish and then allow it they wouldn't they would have a stink so like i think they bassmaster and and the team that they work with there they do a lot so dang so east and tournament days. So obviously you got to fish all three days. So like day one, when you ran down to drowning or whatever, like, was it going the way you wanted it to, or like kind of how did it take you a little bit to settle in on day one? And how many boats were there with you? Or were you like kind of freaking out? All yeah. Cause yeah. Boats around. Cause that, I mean, I've fished grand a couple of times now when you're running down that lake, like you can see everybody like mm -hmm. it's, you can tell where everybody pulls off and everything because there's no nowhere really to get lost. Yeah, so that bank I was talking about, me and Kyle both decided to start on that bank. Like, practice was good enough. We were thinking, like, oh, this will be fun. Like, we're going to be in eyesight of each other. We'll catch 17 each and have a good time, and then we'll leave. That's kind of what we were both thinking. And obviously, it never works how you want it to. We both roll into there, and, like, really quick, we knew something had changed. The water got clear, and it had dropped like six inches or something and like i didn't get a bite kyle i think caught two or three keepers and you know i i was just like well maybe because it was a super cold morning that starting morning like colder than we had seen all week i was just like okay when the sun hits, starts hitting the water maybe they'll pull back up so i started running all the other banks i had bites on and i caught a couple uh, i think i had three keepers at like nine o'clock or something and i was at that time where i was just like i gotta make a decision like do do i you know, do I sit here and hope that they pull up at some point during the day or do I just, just go run new water? And not long after that, I'd actually, I caught a five pounder and, you know, now I'm like, now I'm really stuck. Like, gosh, are they pulling up or is that just a fluke fish or what? Ended up running back through all my stuff, which was a mistake, wasted a whole bunch of time. And now it's noon and I have four fish, one good one. And then now I'm just fine to like, well, I got to pull the plug. Like, nothing's happening here and there was no wind that morning or that day like i couldn't go i couldn't do my swim bait thing either so i ended up bailing on that and just running new water the rest of the day ended up finding my fifth one <clears throat> and you know i had a mediocre day i was in like 45th after day one you know i was definitely still in still in contention to get a check but i was already out of it to win which kind of stunk but but, but to yeah, catch a five pounder at least like catch a five pounder in the classic dude that's pretty sick that, that's that's, what, that's what i told kyle the night before like i just wanted one big one to be able to hold up when i go on stage like yeah that sort of thing like that that was a cool experience 
And then you got it, and then you were like, all right, I want more big ones. <laughs> now <I need> <laughs> like, one. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Don't really need to specify here, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Kyle um, ended up having a pretty good derb there. Did mm -hmm. did he end up leaning on that drowning area kind of for most most day two then or day three? No, or day, day two, two we, we both started in there again, but we gave it like you know a half hour, like barely any time, and it still wasn't happening. So we both bailed and kind of did our own thing. I ended up I ran new water all day and ended up finding a really good area about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I caught, ended up getting on a jerkbait deal, caught a five, a four, and a three back to back to back. Oh, and then, you know, I, I, I found that I had to have had the adrenaline time. rolling. Oh yeah. Like I was having a grand time then. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no That's probably the biggest adrenaline rush I've ever had. Could you see them all like on scope too? Like you caught the first one and then you look back and you're like, oh my God, another one. And then you yeah, threw it and ate again and you're like, oh my God, there's another one. <laughs> those ones are actually at the end of a boat ramp. So it had a okay. washout hole and yeah. you bring your jerk bait over it and it would just appear out of, out of the washout hole. It was a super cool deal. Oh, that's, that's sweet. sweet. But, um, but yeah. Because yeah, day two, was, you had a pretty big bag then, didn't you? I think I had 17 and a half. Yeah. I had a good day, day two. That's I big. That was big. All the way to fifteenth. Wow. And what was that? Where where do they cut checks off, or how far did they go down? Uh, well, the checks go all the way. All Everybody the way down. gets paid. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, to, to fish championship Sunday, you gotta get top twenty-five. Okay. So, Dang. but yeah, I had found that place at like one thirty, one o'clock on day two. So I had I felt like I'd barely even tapped into it. Like I was super excited to go in there on day three and you know expand on that. And I was a pretty late boat number on day three. And I roll into there and I drive past Adam Rasmussen and Cooper Gallant sitting on my spot. And you can see past him, you can see Justin Hamner just past him. <laughs> like oh, all, oh my all, God. All in the top five. And you're so like, I'm like wow. gosh, I'm, I'm behind all these guys. Like, I can't get in their way. Like, you know, they have the right to all this stuff. So I, you know, I just dabble around in there for a little while. I catch like two, three pounders or something like that. And I end up leaving and fish new water again that day. But, you know, it was it was cool to find the winning area, but yeah, you know, just wish I did a little bit earlier, I guess. That's got that. That's sweet. You can you can walk away from it and be like, hey, you competed and you caught them, but you found the winning area. Like you found the winning fish that won the classic. That's it pretty kind of cool to think about. Day, yeah. day three morning blast off though had to have been pretty sick. Just sitting there, you had to have been like, yeah, this is this is it. Like, <laughs> made the final day on like the biggest day in bass fishing you're just chilling you're like yep <laughs> yeah it was, it was nice too like i don't know i was i felt like i was out of contention to win but you know i was fishing championship sunday like i had really no stress just going bass and and you know at the bass match classic like i was i was living living large that day that's awesome what is it like the day after the classic because obviously all the preparation all the overstimulation from the high nerves, anxiety, you're in the arena, and then poof, it's over. Like, what did you just lay down and sleep for like <laughs> hours after that? Yeah. Yeah. I slept a long time, but it's crazy. Like, it feels like you're in like a, like a wind tunnel during the classic. Like, you have so much adrenaline for a full week straight. Like, I can't yeah. even explain it. And then all of a sudden it's just over and you're like, everything's at a standstill all of a sudden. It's a really, it's really weird. Dang. So how long till like, so you finish that tournament, you're kind of coming down from the high from that kind of still riding that wave. How long is it until the next tournament that you fished? Um, I think after the, yeah, after the classic, it was actually our spring break. So I think, I think I went to the beach or something with my roommates and nice. hung out for like, like two or three days. And then I remember after that, it was right in the next tournament. I don't remember where it was, but yeah. so roughly three or four days. Oh, so like right back into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yep. sick. Oh, well, yeah. even even before then, we kind of jumped into the classic, but I was curious, Easton. So you fished your first open down on Okeechobee, and you made a top ten and had a camera on the final day, like after the class, like after the bracket and everything goes down to have your first open go like that. That had to have been like, whoa, I'm doing this type of you know what i mean type of feeling compared to all that were you in the giant group at okeechobee around everyone like mm -hmm. that was, yeah, yeah pink was... i'm not sure if you saw how that tournament went down easton could kind of probably I... dive into it a little bit but it was crazy yeah i mean i saw the drone footage you know of the whole deal but yeah 
Yeah, it was it was crazy day one um, because Scott Martin caught 33 pounds or whatever, and he was completely mm -hmm. undercover, no jersey. His boat wasn't wrapped, and he had a buff on all day. And he was literally the boat next to me in that crowd. Like, I could have peed on his boat if I wanted. And you know, <laughs> Oh, I, I, really? Yeah, yeah. And we were both pulled down. I was catching dinks. He's catching, you know, six to eight pounders. <laughs> and and you're like, no who is this long. dude? Yeah. And he didn't even catch that many fish. Just every time he set the hook was a freak. And, you know, we go into weigh in and I'm looking at the, the, the photo gallery that night. And I was just like, no way. Like I spent <laughs> Martin all day long and I never knew it. And yeah, but then I, that's just that much more confidence. Like I'm in the right area. Just got to buckle down and, you know, figure out how to get those stupid things to bite. Cause that practice I had at Okeechobee was the craziest practice I've ever had. Like, I had fish the size of my leg on scope grabbing my Nico like here and there and everywhere it seemed like and I just like zzz, and come off and I was just like wow like I wonder how big that one was and I was just doing that like all over the place it felt like but yeah and that tournament, tournament was... day they were like I'm not gonna bite actually mm -hmm. they wanted a big bandito bug I guess not my little Nico worm which is kind <laughs> of crazy but... <laughs> But yeah, as the tournament went on, I got more and more dialed in in that group and kind of how to outfish everyone. And that whole week, I was just thinking about the Sturgeon Bay Open because that's the same deal, fishing in a group. And I was just thinking, like, if I hadn't ever done that, like, I would have been... Because, you know, you it seems like you're always watching people catch fish, and that would be so easy to have you get spun out. And, you know, just from my experience at Sturgeon Bay, you just got to put it in the back of your head, like, okay, you're, you're around fish, like, your bites will come. You just kind of have that mindset the whole day that yeah that's i guess i would have never thought of that of that being comparable for doing sturgeon bay to okeechobee like the fishing wise probably not similar at all mm -hmm. but just the crowd and like you're hanging out and you're like well mine will come i hope i'm on the right ditch or depression or current seam or what whatever it is and you're like i just hope they come my way I think mm -hmm. that's a phenomenal comparison just because I'm sure there's other folks your age, whether they fish in college or maybe they're even older that go, I've never competed down South, but what you basically said there is whether you've competed down South or not, there's a lot you can take away by just fishing a lot of derbs up in the mm -hmm. North or just fishing derbs in general, just like, in general, yep. yeah, just, just more instances happen where you can just kind of settle the nerves and go bass. And because once you have that baseline of bass and then it's like, then you can make those micro adjustments that obviously, put guys like you at the classics. So that's, that's really cool because I know there's guys up North that go, ah, I, I'm not going to do that. Or I can't do that just because I, I never fish in Florida. It's like, ah, well, yeah, okay. And I'm sure Easton, you would agree with this. I think, I mean, I know I got into a rut of this last year um, of like, and it happens more when you go fish opens or Toyotas or really big events you keep going like, Oh, there's too many people around and you go try to find something off the beaten path. And you keep chasing this something off the beaten path and you never find it. All you find is ghost fish. And mm -hmm. I think what you learn over time is like being around people is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you just have to learn to outfish people. And that's, I mean, Easton, you could probably talk more to that about around the country fishing. But I feel like a lot of northern guys, it takes a little bit to learn that because you're so used to being able to get away up here. Yeah, like you said, it's, it's all in your head, 100% in your head. Like, Cause I, Mount of Allos, uh, it's, it's on the Coosa river. And that's the first thing I noticed my freshman year of college. Like I went to go to lay Lake and it doesn't matter what ramp you go to or what day of the week it is. Like it is stuffed full of trucks and trailers every day, five days or seven days a week. And I was just like, how is there a bass in this place? Like if that happened around the house, like if I, I felt, I'd feel like yeah. I wouldn't catch anything. And sure enough, you know, you go out there and you start getting some bites and you're just like, gosh, like you just got to jump in with the crowd and you know just like like you said bart you just got to figure out how to outfish people and, you know just you just got to find these little things that can separate yourself you know being more efficient that sort of thing to separate yourself from those crowds yeah so what are the i guess you going into college year one freshman now you're senior yeah what are some really big standouts to you that you think you learned or you grew as an angler and and kind of on those aspects you're just talking like what are some things that you're like if I could tell my freshman self this right now, I'd tell him this. The biggest thing is you got to treat it like any other sport. Like what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. That sort of thing. Like 
you, you don't look at, like a wheeler or a Polonic or, or something like that. Like they're the hardest workers in the whole field and that's why they're, they're successful. And that's, that's kind of what I have. That's kind of the mindset I've adopted, especially this year. Like I look at the opens field, I don't have nearly as many, as much experience as them and I'm not nearly as talented as them. Like what I have to do to compete is just try to outwork them. That's, that's my mindset. Of how did it compete against that field? And that's what I would tell my my freshman self. It's the same thing. You don't have the experience and you're not as talented. You don't, you know, you just haven't done it. So yeah. what you have to do is try to outwork everyone and to separate yourself and to be successful. As a man who's donated quite a bit of money to the Fothergill family over the last few years, I would say the talent thing might be a little bit closer than he's giving off. But yes, he does <laughs> outwork a lot of us as well. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's sweet. Um, so you went, you went out to Sturgeon Bay this year, right? Mm -hmm. Did you fish the open? There's like seven tournaments out there in May and I can never tell what any of them are. Cause I haven't fished any of them yet. Um, but how was Sturgeon Bay this year? I know that's like a, I mean, that's gotta be such a fun trip for you every year. Yeah. It's so much fun, especially being at school from the, all the months before, like, you know, grinding for five bites and then you go up there. It's just a Disneyland of fish. It's kind of, yeah. it's a, it's a breath of fresh air really, but you know, that tournament's super fun. It's really hard to do good in cause you know, you got to catch all six pounders. It seems like now to, to, you know, be in the top five, but, but yeah, it's, that place is unbelievable and it seems like they get bigger and bigger every year. I don't know how it's possible, but. Where was it one out of this year when you were up there? Did it go down a little sturge? It was one up North this year, actually. Really? No way. Finally happened. One up North. Yeah. Thank God. Maybe that spreads people out for once. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no, not the ones up north time. finally got bigger. Months. That's good. That's sweet. Dude, yeah, that but... place is that I spent a little bit of time out there and it's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. So before, I mean, before diving into Leech, sorry, I'm looking at the Wolves game right now, and I'm yeah. A Adam, really give us a little, fire. give us a little update, give us a little yeah, report. Update. Yeah, now that we're like up. we're like an hour and a half in. Yeah, how, uh, how are you feeling? Well, not great because it's still <laughs> close, and we're going into the fourth, and this is when we've always lost. Well, they're, yep. still, they're still winning. Like how it's it's eighty two to seventy eight, eighty three to seventy eight. Uh, over I'm ten minutes left in the fourth. Know. They've looked a lot better from what I've seen this today. A lot more energy. They're fighting hard. Oh, we've, we've got oh, wait, a handful wait. of techs. Wait, wait. Um, how much time is left in the game? Do you just see that to Luca to Irving? The you see that alley? Oh, so I have no, I haven't, I haven't seen this phone. yet. I might be a little bit further behind because I I'm like I'm like ahead of you on my phone here. So maybe I shouldn't <laughs> say nothing. Oh, I just saw the alley oop now. <laughs> that was huge. Wow. Yeah. So either way, how are you feeling about it? <laughs> Not great, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Anyways, back to it. Uh, so <laughs> East and leading into, I mean, we got the Northern Swing coming up for the Opens and everything. I think that's very exciting. I know for me, a lot of us, like we have never gotten to have them all come up north. So, like, you pumped to have everybody up around your pond and everything this year. Or are you excited to come back up north? I am, but selfishly, I don't want Leach to get exposed quite yet. I wish we had a couple more years of it to ourselves, <laughs> but yeah, no, it'll be it'll be a super good event. I think. I, think, I mean, I we I think it'd be good to preview that one a little bit. We won't give up any nuggets or anything, but just in terms of, um, there's so many questions about it. I think there's some generalities we could talk about that kind of help set it up for people. Uh, I think the number one thing is is that it's a very different smallmouth fishery than I feel like they've gone to for the opens for a long time. So guys who've been like to the St. Lawrence or Champlain or whatever. Um, I guess I haven't been out there, but I would think a fish is way different than a lot of other places. Wouldn't you agree to that? Yeah. Different than any other smallmouth lake I've been to really. Um, yeah, it's very strange. And I know, I think the big question going into it, you and I kind of talked about it a little bit today, but I don't know if you can win with 15 smallmouth in a 200 boat field. And I think that's the biggest question. Yeah. I don't, I just, I, I always think about the, the team trail tournament out there and how you could feel the pressure hinder after practice. And that's three days, a hundred boats. You're going to have five days with twice as many boats. Like mm. I really don't know what it's going to look like after that. Cause these guys, 
a lot of them they're just jacking everything they they can and to check size and you know that that hinders a fishery really quick so well, and the thing on leeches you don't really need to check size it's kind of hard to catch small ones it's, yeah like if you ones, run into like four small ones in a row you're like what mm -hmm. yeah so i so, so what's it gonna take a day many factors what so what's it gonna take a day with that many boats and that much pressure and then you got to factor in weather like it could be yeah. It could be 17 or 18 a day, or it could be 23 a day. I don't know. Like, no, but what you got to make a guess right here. I'm going to write it I, down. I, Easton's three day. Easton, if it, if it blows, let's say it blows seven to 10 miles an hour the whole time. I'm going to say 67, 68 pounds. Yeah, I would agree with that. We'll go 67.5. Now, coin flip, it blows 20 to 25 every day. Or just one day. Just one day. Just one day it blows like hell. Mm, 62, 63. Yeah, it'll take it down. And okay. if it's glass calm, 53 pounds. <laughs> if it's glass calm, I think it could break 70. <laughs> Oh, okay. I actually, okay. I, I actually would agree. Bert's in trouble. Just, no, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I ain't never caught him out there when it was calm. <laughs> there, I think Easton would agree. When it's dead calm, they're very hard to get to bite, but you very. can catch a really big bag. Yeah, they're if just very bite. intelligent. Mm -hmm. Who for who a smallmouth that have never been fished for in their lives, they are so smart. Who are yeah. you? Uh, who are you most worried about? Like who who are you like you just find out the day before the derb their axle on their boat breaks and the motor <laughs> absolutely falls off the back end and they can't fish the tournament and you're like, Oh bummer, bummer, but I'm glad he's not here because I think he could have won. <laughs> it's tough because I think about because the field is full of live scopers, right? And you know, obviously live scope comes into play on leech, like everyone can see them and you know, you can see them, but getting getting them to bite out there is a whole different animal. So I'm glad Easton's with me on this because I got back from state last year and I was telling these guys, like, guys, they are really hard to get to bite. I don't think you get how hard of smallmouth they are to get to bite. I mean, you can see a pod of 10 of them and that, that doesn't mean you're going to get a bite. Like, no shot. That's like, almost worse. Bite. Like, if you see a pod of 10 and you throw at them and they don't bite right away, you're like, oh, no, I should just mm -hmm. leave. Those are walleyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like they're walleyes. They're oh, not walleyes. walleyes. <laughs> so I'm really it? curious how many of those southern guys will get fed up with it quick and go to largemouth, or if they'll figure out like a little something that none of us have figured out yet. Like, there's so many things that could happen in that tournament. Like, I'm super curious to see how it goes down. That's I the am... interesting thing, though, right? Like, getting all these people that have never experienced it to go there. Like, do they unlock some crazy shit that like nobody's messed with before, or you know? Like that's an interesting I just think about like Kenta and Koya and those guys coming, like they wreck smallmouth everywhere they go. But I know a leech is a whole different smallmouth animal than anywhere I've ever been. So and I've tried some crazy stuff out there and I haven't found the magic tool yet. So I have no clue what's gonna happen. No clue. I th yeah, I think it'll be really interesting for that fact. And I think if the wind blows, it will lean in Easton's favor. And that's, I will say because of the most gangster thing I've seen in my life was last year in the team trail. When I went and started on the windy side and I'm the only boat down there and I'm like, look at Voight. And I'm like, dude, we got to get out of here. Like waves are big enough that I'm keeping the boat idled forward while he's pulling the trolling motor up so that we can like spin around, go to stuff. Like it's a whole two man effort to even move the boat around. And I'm like, okay, I got to leave. And I like pick up to start leaving. And as I'm leaving, Easton is coasting in with the waves and his dad to go start fishing. And in my head, I went, I am so fucked. Because <laughs> I had just broke like three or four off. And I was like, if he's still coming into the wind right now, I cannot stay here. And I don't know how he can, just if it's more big water experience than me. But I was like, I was start, I was starting to get nervous that day down there. Dang. That's that's another thing. It goes back to Sturgeon Bay, big water, yeah. big water experience. 
For but sure. that place, um, I had told Panger that if it blows over 20, I think someone will sink a boat. It gets that leech. big. And they're not swells out there either. Like they just build up, they don't build wide. So no, it, you it, can't. It gets nasty quick. You get on the wrong side and you're kind of screwed. Mm hmm. You can get caught, and you, there's no troughs. Like you can't. That's, yeah, you can't, you can't, yeah, run, you can't the, run them sideways. It's just not possible. You just put your nose into it and get the ever living shit kicked out of you. It <laughs> exactly. really sucks. It hurts really bad. Damn. Okay. No, I think that one will be good. So this will, I guess, the weight questions and everything. But this is what I want to know, Easton. This is what the whole state of Minnesota wants to know. They're all curious of this. Will you make a cast for a largemouth? at any point of practice or the tournament in leech. Yeah. In practice, hundred percent five days out there. I'll be doing, I'll be going psycho. I think <laughs> I, I'll definitely need a large mouth backup in order to be sane. I think going into that tournament, just cause like I said, that all that pressure on all that stuff, cause the lake really doesn't fish that big for how big it is. I mean, you know, there's lots of fishable water, but there's definitely a couple key areas where they live. So I'm definitely going to need, you know, one or two little largemouth quick hitters to, you know, fill a limit if I need to. And I think uh, one of the things that's going to mess with a ton of people out there, because I know it messed with me, uh, even my first time, a couple times there is, you can be fishing something completely different than people and everything. And it's unlike Mille Lacs where like people disappear. You see people the whole time on leech. Mm -hmm. Like there's mm -hmm. always boats. So you're mm -hmm. like, it, it's just weird. It, it feels way more crowded than it maybe even is, um, I would say. So. The nice thing about leech, too, is those fish act like Great Lakes fish. To me, at least, they move so much. Yes. So that's that's another nice thing, too. And You know, you could be in a crowd, but just know that there'll be, always be new fish filtering into you. That's just something people got to keep in the back of their minds, I'm thinking. Yeah. I thought for the longest time it was uh, like they lit for the first – bit i was up there i'm like they live on this and then once i started running into fish leaving me and weird things happening i'm like oh no they just like i thought they live on this it's just a different school pulled up to this mm -hmm. and then a new school pulled up and then a new school and you're like okay there's actually just swimming 24 7 yeah there's just so much more structure out there than any lake i have ever been to in my life oh yeah that's another thing too. Like people will get out there and just be like, Oh, fishing boulders, blah, blah, blah. And then before they know it, the 500 boulders marked and I don't know what to do with them. So yeah, dude, there's like thousands of boulders the size of your, the front of a car. Mm. Wow. Thousands. And they all um, look amazing. Yeah. The crazy <laughs> thing is you can pull up to any of them at any time and catch a five pounder. Like it's, it, it'll mess with a lot of people's heads for sure. It is. It is a, it's gonna it's be hard. Fun it's gonna be a fun one here. to watch, especially. I think the live for that one will be fun because there's gonna be people who figure out the smallmouth and they'll be in the top ten. But there's for sure gonna be like three to five guys largemouth fishing in the rice and like stuff like that. So if there's you're a guy who gets sick of live away. scope, like you're gonna have one pan of a guy throwing a frog in rice and another mm -hmm. pan of a guy looking at live scope out in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what'll be cool about that event. Dang, what if sure. the smallies get beat so hard in practice that a dude from down south literally wins it on all green? Is that ever a possibility ever? Not that, happening. Not going to happen. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> There's enough big smallmouth out there. There's a better likelihood that everyone in the top 10 weighs all five. Or all 15. But I think that's a pretty low likelihood. Okay. Would be my guess. But no, it'll be sweet. So... Out of any of the remaining opens that are not leech, what are you most excited for, Easton? Or mm -hmm. St. Clair. You can't say St. Clair. That's a cheat code. We're all excited for St. Clair. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I was scared about Ufala, but I've been really researching it a lot lately, looking at maps and stuff, and I'm getting kind of excited about that one. Um, and then Hartwell is definitely the next one I'm most excited. That's my favorite lake in the whole country, Lake Hartwell. So. I'm definitely excited to end the season there. Did you ever get any team trail experience down on the Mississippi River? Or do you not have much experience on the Mississippi River yet? I've I've fished like three high school tournaments there, but no team trail experience. So should have shown I'm, up for the early ones, Easton. Should have showed up. 
<laughs> him and his dad were always at Sturgeon Bay. Yeah. I'm excited because, <laughs> you know, being in high school, I had never seen a river like that before. But now going to school on a river for four years, I'll look at it completely different. So I'm kind of excited for that. Yeah, you'll do you'll do fine having fish the Tennessee River and the Coosa River. Dang. So beyond bassing, give me some of this. What what gets your gears going beyond bassing? Are are you into sports? You got a wife, you got kids, you got you got a, a certain hobby. Maybe maybe it's even tinkering with tackle, like tying hair jigs or anything like that, that you're like, okay, I really enjoy doing this. What beyond bass fishing gets you going? I'm a basketball nut. I, I really? Oh, I oh so we're all into this right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure. All right. All right. Let's get off here and watch. Yeah. At school, I play basketball pretty much every night. Nick and I actually play with the track team at school. So that's fun. That's sweet. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been on cloud nine watching the wolves until they started facing the Mavs. I've been kind of down and out lately. But <laughs> You well, would have watching it right now. If you, you what. if you would have been up at cab with us, Easton, me and Nichols stayed another night in our cabin to watch the game. Oh hell yeah! I'm a little behind. I just saw the two cat threes in a row. That was big time. Okay, that that's big. cool. I'm that glad. Good. I'm glad you're a T wolf fan though, Easton. So you have fished. You how long have you fished the Graha on uh, Pacag? I've fished it the last. These guys two years. like fishing for walleyes a bit this too, is, so you can feed them on that. This coming summer will be my fourth year fishing it. Have nice. you? Do they have a tent ride and everything there too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, explain to uh, Pink and Soby and maybe our listeners what is the Graha? So, like Lake Pacagama up in Grand Rapids, I would argue is maybe one of the best fisheries in the state of Minnesota, just for mm -hmm. all species. It's really remarkable um but yeah easton yeah the graha is the biggest one day payout walleye tournament in minnesota it's 18 grand for a one day tournament 18 grand first place and it's you know it brings all the top walleye guys we have hoyer been out here kicking my butt the last two years which i'm kind of upset about but you have all the <laughs> you have like the mackies and you know the all those guys come to my home lake here at pakegma and come fish that tournament so it's fun to you know do that tournament against those guys and see like a whole new crowd of people it's definitely what, a good time what's the differences in like the culture of like a walleye dirt versus kind of or just walleye we ask guys? gussie these questions too so yeah what the are craziest they like? thing i think is there is no such thing as shaking fish off in a walleye tournament like people jack them all practice like you look around and there's people wrecking them all week long <laughs> really like, yeah and all the guys are live scoping too like I don't know why you can't just point at one and be like, oh, there's a nice walleye and just leave it alone. You got to cast at it. <laughs> That's the craziest That's thing I've true. noticed. No saving but. fish. That is interesting. What did it, so Pacagama is an incredible fishery. What did it take last year for five walleyes to win the Graha? Mm, it, well, it didn't break 50 yet. I think last year was a little bit lower year. I think it was like 45 pounds. I might be way off to win. For five walleyes, Sobe. 45 wow. pounds that's mm. wicked quality dude on average it takes you need roughly a 28 to 29 inch average for five to win it what i didn't know i didn't know it took that much weight i i i know a lot of bu buddies that fish the gras like even newly and stuff like i didn't know it took that wow hmm. so yeah, I'm, I'm not a great walleye angler by any means maybe even after what i learned on cabotoga i told you guys at the beginning but uh I could, uh, we could catch a few walleyes on Pekeg. I have caught, I have caught quite a few there in bass fishing practice. Let's and go. Let's catch the graha. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. It could be fun. Maybe, so, maybe actually, I would like maybe register PTB, for that one. That was pretty team. fun. I, I like Pekegma. We'll just get way too distracted with smallmouth. <laughs> like that will. All right, maybe well. Bart's out. But uh, <laughs> all right, birds out. <laughs> no, that place is so fun to walleye fish. It just blows my mind. Like going around out there, you'll get shallow looking for smallmouth, and you look down, and there's a pot of like twenty walleyes swimming by you, and they're all wow. enormous. Mm -hmm. It, it is. is. It's definitely a pretty cool fishery. Anything, it, even even yellow perch, they get huge, and there's a lot of them. Like literally everything that's in that lake, it's big. It's, it's super cool. Is it the smelt that makes that so dynamic out there? It's the smelt and Cisco mix. There's a ton yeah. of each. I think the walleyes are 
they're obviously heavy on the smelt and also the Cisco's and there's a super healthy population of both. So I was going to say, didn't it take a downturn a while back? It seems like it's kind of firing back now. It did. I think it's like eight years ago now. The smelt died off and the lake was definitely in a funk there for a couple of years, but it's it's back strong now for sure. That's sweet. Awesome. Well, what else? You got anything pink, Sobe? What do you got rolling around? No, I mean, I just, if we want to, I, I do have a, a, a kind of a, another segment here that I'd love to love to throw at you Easton so we we do a small segment on here that uh we'll just go around the horn here and just uh this one's called what you've been drinking and uh just tell the people what's uh what you've been drinking what's your what's your go-to beverage of choice right now so if you want to lead it off first we'll let Easton yeah. think. We'll let, right. we'll let Easton think he can stew on it um <laughs> It's been a mix of things as far as, uh, just a, a nice cold beer recently. Um, I had a good buddy drop off some new Glarus spotted cows, which is sweet. You can only get them in Wisconsin. Besides that, um, I've been hammering some LaCroix, but why? I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a stuff animal, dude. I know. I, I like these <laughs> bubbly bounces. They're, they're even I am worse. staring at the exact same flavor LaCroix over really? and it tastes just right as now. awful. <laughs> it's called Raz, terrible, dude. Raz Cranberry, but the, the worst part about LaCroix, or at least these, is they don't have caffeine in them. Steph gets these and they that, don't yeah. taste good. Uh, I like them. I like them. I'm <laughs> a whole fan, dude. LaCroix, shout out LaCroix. Shout out, shout out sparkling water. If you but, get a LaCroix boat wrap, I'd probably never talk to you again. <laughs> as, as far as burning the midnight oil fuel out fishing recently, I've been getting some. Um, oh, I just blanked. They're the. Uh, oh my gosh, I just blanked. They're, they're so the, good, they, though, right? They say live fit on them but they're like not the celsius dude the celsius celsius okay. the oh, yeah. celsius the then celsius, that celsius train hard dude yeah. it, the, those energy drinks hit pretty straight hard. to the veins bro. yeah and, and they get you through to you out fishing late dude like they're that. like 100 mgs less than a rain or a bang you remember when we were drinking two or three of those a day Whew. yeah yeah but 200 <laughs> mgs back, 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 yeah, back, to back 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 to back yeah i'm ready to die today <laughs> that's what you're on easton what are you on as much traveling as I'm doing lately, it's a rain for sure. Rain. Mm, okay. what, what flavor rain? It's the it's the blue and purple one. Razzleberry, I think it's called. I like that one. Oh, this is you guys are gonna. I've never had a rain. <laughs> never had a rain. They're good. No, they're good. They're good. you should. Yeah, you think? Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't, don't. Because like, I've had a lot so of caffeine good. in my life, and my heart flutters when I drink a rain. They really? hit, dude. That's the big guns when you're like, we need it. Yep, rain. They hit. You're and in Southern like, Illinois, and you're like, I need to get to Kentucky or Tennessee right now. Rain. Rain. Okay. Okay. Bart, how about you? What you been drinking? Well, I want to know, Easton, What do you ever have a sip of alcohol? That's cool here and there. Other than okay. that. What what you drinking alcohol-wise? Alcohol, alcohol wise? You having anything? You a White Claw guy? You strike no, me I'll as be, just I'll a be. honey whiskey in the corner kind of guy. I'll be a, I'll be a <laughs> Tito Sprite type of guy. Tito Sprite. Oh, All right. All right. Yeah, what about meal? You ever hit some meal in that Tito Sprite? I have. That's what. Oh, my oh okay. Yeah. We're Dabbling. digging in. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> I I regret to inform you, I was a vodka soda guy, and I was so much that I brought it up to the team trail on Cabotogama. After <laughs> I had, I had the recipe down. I had just won the Jude. I had just been like, drink a few bush lights, have a moon man. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not a beer guy anymore. I'm going to have a vodka soda each night. And then guess what? I caught 11 pounds. So guess who's not a vodka soda guy anymore? <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Change momentum. Change momentum. <laughs> it, work. It, it wasn't you. It Hold wasn't on. you. It was Damn not my soda. It wasn't you. <laughs> it was the vodka sodas. And so being responsible. What? Screw that. Where do you pivot from vodka soda now? What do you what do you go to now? Well, the next well, I, I got the Minnetonka Classic this weekend, so it'll it'll be some beers. But uh, the next tournament will be at the river, and I will be buying an inhumane amount of Moon Man and two women to bring back home. The moon Man, because that is the recipe. Okay, you do like them goddamn heavy ones, boy. Yeah, you do like them heavy bears. I do. Sounds, I like for like my head to be a little sounds bit. Sounds like you're drinking a morning. goddamn smoothie when I'm sitting next to you. 
<laughs> that's very <laughs> fair. <laughs> I'm like, geez, that's all right, Ryan. Ryan. You were just what? truck camping. You were doing musky opener. What you been drinking? Dude. The rum and coke's been flowing, brother. Oh, they're always flowing. No, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> for you. <laughs> but the, I did, I did go to a uh, graduation party in the Greater Stevens Point area. Okay. On Saturday evening, uh, and they were flowing there, but I will say I switched. I went to a a little a different a different brand that I do really like, but I never buy because it's like I'm, you know, well, but Appleton's, dude. Ooh. Appleton's. Appleton's. Okay. It's a Jamaican okay. rum. Whew. Yeah. Explain That's to it. me what it tastes like. Destiny, uh, mostly, uh, but it's very smooth, really good. Just try it. If you ever see it somewhere, Appleton's rum, get it, pour it in your Coke, game over. Okay, I like that. Then what about a little lime? Drink? Little lime, you know, just doctor it up. Well, yeah, dude, what are you? I'm not a savage, you know. I also brought the limes with me, and guess who will not be buying a lime before the next tournament? <laughs> me. Oh. I'll bring limes then if I'm fishing with you. How about that? No, no, we're good. We're so, good. Then, so then where are you at with the energy drinks? You were you were grinding. I was, dude. I uh I kind of had this combo worked out because it was like, you know, the days were long, you know, you're musky grinding, or whatever. And then when you're like sleeping in the back of the truck. So it was like the morning, I was like easing into it in the morning. Yeah. So I was hitting like bubblers back to back for breakfast, just being okay. like, you know, quick trip. <laughs> Back to back bubblers, yeah. And then I was going till I started grinding a little bit, and then I was bringing out the big guns, dude. I was raining during the day, oh. But then you get to the walleye bite, and you're like, "Well, we're definitely staying out till 11, 30, 12, whatever." Yeah. Doing that, spin it back around with the Celsius, and then I got the shakes pretty good, and then I just pass out in the back of the truck. So. <laughs> <laughs> but once I feel real, real shitty, I can go to sleep anytime. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, so it was a deadly combo. Probably really bad for you, but yeah, three days to crack is all right. I like that. That's a good round the horn. What you've been drinking, you guys. Remember to yeah. comment below. Anybody listening, what you've been drinking? We're always game to try new stuff. Um, and even comment your favorite rains because I'm I'm gonna try one. I probably shouldn't, but I'm gonna try one. You should. Oh, he's gonna go but down. I... Easton top three favorite rains. Get him started. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 hold on. You might not want to. Oh wait, let it out That's of the. Right. You might not yeah, want to. Yeah say that yet so yeah, one easton, more segment do, do you have time for a little game easton yeah sure perfect all right the so, issue was is i told him we weren't going to do a tea along podcast and he's like i'm fine i got plenty of time and i was like uh, you just drank a rain dude he's fine all right <laughs> so okay he's got up in six second. hours right. at least at least yes yeah. so where, where are we at with this game it's almost done right yeah, we a got like a minute. minute. To go. Well, it depends on what delay I'm on compared to you. I have guys. a minute and four seconds left. I do not, so don't ruin it for oh, me. Oh, dude, I could turn okay. this around right now. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe you have a minute four. Maybe I'm that. Maybe I'm behind. I have a minute thirty-eight. Oh, minute two. Minute two. Oh, things, things are happening, happened. boys. Things are happening. Are you are you watching online at all, Easton? I'm just I'm just watching the score. Okay. I gotta shoot you. Oh, God. So you can watch on your phone. This is once this we're rolling bad. into terrible podcasting right this now. Is once again, really but, bad guys. Oh uh, yeah, worry. we can get into the game. So All right, let me explain what this but... is. Okay, we have a game called one v one v one. So this is just like a head to head sort of trivia game. But the way this works is th there will be a category for the whole thing. I have ten quick hitters, basically. Each one has three clues as to the answer. So if you get it on the first clue, you get three points. If you get it on the second clue, you get two points, so forth. Once it gets to the end, you get one point. Um, so the clues should progressively help you guess what the answer is. For it, So I'll give you an example here. So if I was going to say, like, today's was going to be uh, animals. Animals is the category. And the, the first clue I would give you is antlers. What would you guess? A deer. Okay, well, then you would be correct, and you would get three points. But to buzz in, you got to say your name is how you buzz in to answer. So you have to say your name to buzz in, and then I'll say, yep, answer it, and you go. If you get it wrong, though, these boys 
all get to either decide to hear the next clue or get a free guess. So if you answer and you're wrong, they get the next clue and then they get to answer before you. Okay. It might sound a little confusing, Easton, but it's, it's not. very easy. easy. You just, just say remember, your name. If you, you think gotta, you don't answer, you, you just go Easton, and then boom, hit your answer. So you got to be quick. You got to be quick here, and I'll keep score. Um, so I have 10. I do have a tiebreaker one if we get to that, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Okay, today's category is energy drink brands. Oh, my God. I'm gonna I will be giving you flavors – of energy drinks, you have to tell me what brand it is. We're very lucky, lucky that Cody Honor is in here because he would dust would us have been so yes. rapidly. Yeah. It would have been. Yeah. yeah, he would have won. So I, th I think you guys will do good here. We'll see how this goes. But let's lead it off. What do we got? Oh, God, you're going to implode in the middle of this 38 seconds, 32 seconds left. Boys, get dialed. All right. First one, we're starting off easy. Sparkling Fuji Apple Pear. Sobe. Bart. Fuck. Sobe. I'll do bubbler. Incorrect. Oh. <laughs> Incorrect. Bart. Bart. Bart, go ahead. Celsius. Correct. Oh, that's oh. like the one that I'm on, too. Dude, dude, you Rookie. had to have that. You I only drink Rookie. that mango, dude. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's that orange oh. mango one. Dude, you ain't experienced. Dude, they have Maybe. like 30 flavors. I only get the orange one every time, dude. I'm a simple man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Run it up. All Run right. Here. All right. All right. Number two, Zero Ultra. Zero Ultra. Going once. Another going clue. Twice. No guesses. All right, we're going to the second second clue here. For two points, Rehab. Oh, Monster. Bart. Bart. Oh, monster. Correct, 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 correct. I just answered and didn't say my name. You did. You did. You you, you really blew it there. Big catch. Yeah. Wow. How many points is that for Bart? That he's uh he's off to a five point lead here. He's got a five zero run, boys. Come no, on. I I have you you let that happen. I don't know what happened there. That was a major out. drop ball. Okay. Number three, sugar free OG. Shelby. Shelby. We're going to go Red Bull? Incorrect. For two points. Hardcore Apple. Hardcore Apple. Sugar-free OG. I feel like Easton's got to figure one of these out. <laughs> the fans are getting restless. Listening. <laughs> Their kids screaming at their parents. They are. The They're literally oh. drinking this angrily. Anyway, know. for know. one point, whipped orange. Whipped orange. Oh. <laughs> wow. Attention. The side you eye can, on the game. It's you everything. Can, you can. This game's crazy. <laughs> I'm just really not happy right now because I know I'm delayed, but I just saw the Luca and one three. Yeah, there's 12 seconds to go. And I'm at 13 tight. two. Yeah, I'm at 13 two. Hold up. Let's see this. Lu she's, Luca's at the line. Tight. Luca's at the line. <laughs> and yes. one three. I'm not a fan of that. Oh my God, boys. This could be pretty poor. It could be one of the worst things we've done, to be honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> but folks, terrible. There's okay, so what do you say? Right. What was the flavor? Easton, you still haven't gotten this? No, I have Sugar free no OG, hardcore apple, whipped orange. This is for one goddamn point, boys. Whipped orange. You gotta just take a shot here. I don't even know. Soby. Soby. Rockstar. Correct. Oh, oh! oh! <laughs> He's like Googling, Googling. <laughs> Googling. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. Right. All right. Wow. That was a deep hole, boys. Curve okay. Break now. Let's roll. <laughs> All right. Number four. We're going blue edition. Soby. Blue. Art. Soby. Red Bull. Correct. Damn it. Boom. Is that five? This, and give me some help. Three, that's a three banger. So Soby with four points. Bart with five. Easton still sitting at the goose egg here. Goose egg. Skunked. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Rally, Easton. Where are you? All right, here we go. Number five, peach mango. 
for three points. Peach mango. Sobe. Is there any duplicates or no? No. Sobe. Bang. That is correct. Fuck! Oh! <laughs> wow. Cat. Wow. Catman. Catman. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Need it. Need it. Wow, dude. I'm making a major comeback here. I love Nasreed. Nasreed is my favorite. <laughs> All right. All right. Number six. Easton, you got to get in the game here, brother. Okay. We're going Warhead Sour Watermelon. Oh. Oh. What? Um, Warhead's this... Sour Watermelon. Um. Oh, Easton. Easton. Is that, is that Ghost? Correct. Oh, Boom, on the yeah. board. Th oh, I just saw the Nas Reed thing. I also love Nas Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's like delayed just enough that it's like. <laughs> and they didn't ruin it for me, so that was good. Oh, I do yeah. love Nas Reed. Is that the brand that does a lot of the like cold branding flavors? Like they do the Starburst one. Yeah. And that Why don't stuff? I read you the other two? Chicks. Why don't I read yeah. you the other two? It would have been Sour Patch Kids Blue Raspberry and okay. Swedish Fish. Oh my god. Swedish fish sounds like it would be a terrible energy drink flavor. Well, for two ninety nine, you could find out. <laughs> <laughs> shout out ghost. Yeah. Okay. Out. <laughs> we do need sponsors. <laughs> shout out, shout out, ghost. All right. Uh we're going strawberry starburst. Strawberry starburst. Oh. Anyone? Anyone? I know this. I know this. Anyone? I wanted to say ghost, but it's not that. There's no duplicates. It is not that. Going to clue number two. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Clue number two. Arctic snow cone. Oh, Arctic God. snow cone. There is a four-year-old screaming at their Somebody's car. crushing one of these cans on their face right now, waiting for you to answer this question. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Grape Frost for one point. Grape Frost. I don't know. I have no idea this one. Strawberry Starburst, Arctic Snow Cone, Grape Frost. Any guesses? Any guesses? You got a free shot here. And we're coming back to Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> T-Wolves won, by the way, folks. We're pretty hyped up. There it is. There it is. Maybe you could drink one of these right now to even hype it up even more. Anyone? Otherwise, I'm just going to blow it here. Blow it. I, I do not know. Answer is C4. Oh, C4. oh duh. Yeah, duh. I, yeah, I don't yeah. even think of them as an energy drink. I think of it as a pre-workout. Is that the, that's not the same thing, right? <laughs> they started with okay. the powder. I don't think they are. Maybe you can I'm buy not. it at Quick Trip, dude. Yeah, well, yeah, the cans now. Yes, Luke, I've Luke is mad, dude. Luke again. is mad, dude. All right, number well, eight. They put point two on the clock. What? This isn't looking good for you, boys. They said final, dude. What are they doing? Hold on, you hold on. They just put point two back. Breaking on the clock. news. Breaking news. Yeah, breaking news. The T game's game not over. It said 105. We will figure out a way to lose this in point. <laughs> no, no, no exactly. don't say that, dude. He's are you watching this? They just Easton, we'll explain what's going on. Everyone's mad. And now they're back <laughs> they're on the court. Half the stands are empty. There's 0. 0.2 seconds left. And now there's riots. Yep. They're like, <clears> game is back on. They're going to inbound the ball. <laughs> Mine shows final people walking off the court. Okay, now it's final. Okay. They believe it or not, they still didn't get the shot up in time. <laughs> okay, anyways, wow. how many more you got, Pink? All right, run. We're on number eight. So number eight. So scoreboard update. Bart with five, Sobe with seven, Easton with three. So I mean, games right. anybody's right now. Games anybody's. Number eight. We're looking at Pineapple, orange, mango. Pineapple, orange, mango. Anyone? 
Sobe? No. Pineapple orange man. Sobe. Bubbler? Do we Incorrect. Know? That's not Incorrect. an energy drink. I don't know. Energy. Strong energy. energy. Strong. Strong. Okay. All right. For two points. Anyone going to guess there? For two points. Strawberry no. startup. Strawberry startup. Mm. Mm. Another one. Another clue. Orange citrus. Bart. Orange Bart. Mountain Dew Kickstart. Correct. Fuck. Oh, I should have guessed wow. it two turns ago. Wow. <laughs> that was it. huge. Two points. <laughs> That was one. That was one point. That was okay. one point. So now could have taken the lead. God, you could have. You could I heard the final one, and I was like, "It was Griff." <laughs> it was. Damn it! You probably have those cans in your truck. So okay. So you dig uh, deep enough in any ice fishing shack in Minnesota, you will find an orange kick start can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got two to go here. Number nine. We're looking at Dream Pop. Dream Pop. Shelby. Shelby. Prime? Correct. Oh, that was big. God. That was big. That was real I've big. never even had one. Never even tried one. That was big. <laughs> Shout out Prime. One. Shout out Prime. Two, they three. They sponsor podcast. Shout out Prime. <laughs> Hit us. Wow. Up with it. <laughs> that was, dude, I was just thinking of energy drink brands. I'm like, shoot. shoot I was shot. trying to think of ones that we hadn't said yet. And I was like, I got nothing in my brain right now. <laughs> nothing. All right. All right. That was a that was a big that was a big score. All right. Number 10. We're looking at what are we right here? Sour gummy worm. Sour gummy worm. How are we on another like sour something? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. how they many make, energy they make damn many. Dude, trust me. I went down the rabbit hole today. There's a lot of sour. Sour gummy worm. Uh, I don't know. I don't okay. know. For two, for two points. White gummy bear. Easton. Easton. It's rain. Boom. Oh, oh, we had to, oh, we oh. hadn't said rain yeah, yet. Yeah, we hadn't said rain yet. Dang. Is that your favorite? White gummy bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah, so white flavor. gummy bear hits. White, white gummy bear is the one. Like if you're going to have one, that's the one. It's very good. Yeah. All right, okay. so we do have one more, and this is this is an interesting scoreboard. So we have <laughs> Sobe with six, or no, Sobe with ten, Bart with six, Easton with five. Yikes, boys. Just beat Easton for once. <laughs> this is your I moment, do Bart. It. This is your moment. Okay. It's not a small mouth tournament. It's a large mouth tournament in dirty water grass. For three <laughs> points, cosmic stardust. Oh, oh, oh dude. Fuck. Oh, um, I know this, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna go Sobe. Sobe. Is that bang again? Incorrect. No, Incorrect. they do have starburst. Cosmic, cosmic star. stardust. Oh, dude, we talked about this. Is this Stolsky or, or Honor's deal? This might be a, a Honor one. I'm trying to think of it so hard right now. I told you the answer to this on a previous pod. I know you did. And I don't remember the name of these energy drinks that you <laughs> have loved. And I know and this that is, Boyd you can has score had three them right really now. You can them. score three right now. I know. Now. And I know exactly what it is. I can think of the can, but I can't think of the name of it. I don't know what to tell you, dude. <laughs> Bart. Bart. Zevia? Incorrect. In Zevia, you seen any guesses? I'm just naming random things that I know are in my fridge right now. Otherwise, we're going to two points here. Go to two for two points. Cherry slush, cherry slush. Cherry slush. God, I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ending on a high note here. The Wolves won. <laughs> the Wolves won, but goddamn, this isn't looking good for you right now. I don't know. Give us another clue. Breezeberry. Breezeberry. Cosmic Stardust, Cherry Slush, 
Breeze Bear. Give us, give us their their catchphrase or their logo. Do they get a catchphrase like Red Bull? Gives I don't know you if wings? they have a catchphrase. I'll look, uh, let's see. The... I feel like we can guess this. So they're they're um. I don't think they have like a catchphrase, dude. Cosmic Stardust, dude. I know what that is. You obviously do not. <laughs> I know. I'm so tempted to Google. I don't know what it is. Just tell Put me. My hands off. What is it? The answer is Alani New. God Alani damn it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I knew it was the new energy drinks you were talking about. Voight <laughs> had one of them and he said they were legit. And I'm like, yeah, I don't remember what they were. That's what they are. Cosmic Stardust. That's the one, the purple one. Read the that scoreboard one. back really quick. I just saw I'm taking notes. All right. Here. So this is the final, boys. This is the final. We're not putting any time back on the clock here. Easton Fothergill with five points. Sam is, that dead, is that dead last? You do got dead last. We're still doing we're still okay, doing sorry. the fucking way in here, dude. <laughs> this is the way in. Sobi Sobi with, with 10. 10 points. Dropping a bag here. Adam Bartusik coming in with six. Six points. Mm. So I'm sorry, mm. Easton. You were dead last. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we don't have any prizes. But I will say <laughs> he did get the rain one before anyone else. Yeah, that so was, really that was, uh, who's the winner here? Yeah. Ain't mad. <laughs> Ain't mad at it. All right. That was one v one v one. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Dang. Well, oh, Easton, God. we won't take up more of your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your experiences. You've had an incredible last year full of experiences. And um the boys and I are excited to just watch your career kind of unfold. The rest of the season, obviously, as you move forward, dude, you're you're an absolute supernova sludge hammer, and it's gonna be a freaking blast falling along with you the rest of the open. So good luck and thank you again for coming on past Barb. Seriously, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, boys, for having me. For sure. See you, Easton. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Where can well, where can they follow along? Where can they follow along to you and kind of the rest of your fishing career? What shout out your handles really? Really quick. No, I'm mostly active on my Instagram. It's just Easton Follow Go Fish. And then also on my Facebook, it's Easton Follow Go Fishing. So nice. pretty simple. That's that's where I keep everyone updated on what's going on. So nice. right on. If you like pictures of big bass on stage, that's typically what he posts. So, <laughs> so if not, you're going to be pretty bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Well, nice to you in East and have a good one, boss. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Peace. Dang. Epic 1v1. <laughs> epic guest. Epic T-Wolves game. What a night. We're it's back. A good night. A, we're, we're back. We're <laughs> back. Pass the Barb is back. Number one outdoor podcast in the world. Incredible. With a home base in Minnesota where we have cheered on the Timberwolves to their first victory against damn Luca. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> got him. And I just really hope when the TNT crew comes back to Minneapolis, they leave Dr Draymond Green at the fucking airport because I'm oh! sick of hearing him. Oh, <laughs> sick of it. F words. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, I'm pumped about the Wolves. We get another game. They'll be back in Minneapolis. I assume the game will be on Thursday now. Um, they're going every other. So, yeah, Thursday night, I'll be watching a Wolves game somewhere. And uh, who knows? Maybe we can make it 3 2. I like one it. game at a time at this point. So they looked a lot better today. Still some moments where all of a sudden they gave up a 10 point lead in no time. And you're like, how did that happen? But uh, there was quite a few technical fouls from what really? I saw. Uh, yeah. Several texts. So people were on edge, which is good. And the game ended weird. Like, obviously we don't have the volume on, um, but it ended really, really weird. And Luca looked unsettling. And I think he's, I think that's going to rattle him, dude. I think he's pissed. I yeah. think he's best. <laughs> I'm excited. Get ready, boys. I'm Get excited ready. for the rest of the series. But uh yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe maybe we'll be good again. <laughs> what are you We're gonna do? Basketball. Bart, make it make it right here. Make something right here. Are will you get a Nas Reed tattoo if we win the series? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm yes. right. All right. All right. Yeah. I got the timestamp written down. If we win be, this series, he's absolutely. gonna be Nas Reed. 4 p.m. in no time. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious if it like if somehow they won this series and somehow I like got the Minnetonka classic this weekend and it's like, oh my God, I got two tattoos. <laughs> Dane, Dane would be like, I'm going to be so done with tattoo bets soon. So he's just going to keep ripping them at me until it happens. You will, dude. We're getting them inked until it works. We're getting them inked. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Well, Love any it, final boy. thoughts, boys? Any Anything else? Dude, I'm thinking? just I'm just ready. Ready for more fishing. Ready for more stuff coming. Like, summer is going to be here before we know it, dude. Like, yeah. Game on. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. Nas but, Reed. Nas <laughs> Reed. <laughs> no, three. we'll just let them know with that we'll leave it there <laughs> leave it there thanks for, for the watching people. another episode of pass the barb tuning in listening watching on youtube thank you thank you and tell your rate. mother tell your brother rate subscribe uh we're the number one outdoors podcast in the world we couldn't be more proud nice read <laughs>